is a uh, romantic horror. We'll see uh, of the Gothic Ages. Uh, we'll see how romantic it gets, but uh, romantic horror of the Gothic Ages game. Uh, it is. I put a link in the description. People watching, you can download the PDF for free, or you can buy the. I think I'll get that on Amazon. Um, and we are uh, the group has been uh, traveling uh, on a, a paddle steamer from uh, from France uh, to heading towards Cork Ireland is the um, we know it's, it's a party boat everybody's fairly wealthy and you're enjoying yourself uh, you know this is a luxurious way to travel uh, these days the year is 1789 and uh, the party has to move downstairs as the after the sun sets because a heavy storm starts to come in. Uh, after a while, everybody uh, goes back to their cabin and uh, are awoken. Who knows what time it is uh, by the crew rushing you off the boat. The storm has smashed the boat against some rocks and you're being uh, pushed into lifeboats uh, instead of drift, essentially. Um, somehow, your... Uh, your particular boat did not get a crew member on it from the, that was sea, sea knew the sea. So as you sit there we're trying to figure out what to do uh, in the pouring rain and fog that came after, um, your you notice that your your boat is actually got a leak in it, um, and you're starting to maybe think this might be your last night on Earth. And as the sun rises, you see just off the the edge of the the horizon. A small island, and on that island, you notice this is how you kind of you notice it at first. There is a building, and the building seems to have light coming from it. So, you guys can intro yourself on the boat as the boat's being uh, pushed by the current towards the shore of this rocky island. Um, let me see if I can do this properly. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go there. So, a picture, and uh, let's go. It's gonna go in order from here. Oh, we'll, get bumped. we'll see how this goes tonight. So let's go with Constance. Tell us a little bit about Constance, Mike, and uh, how you're feeling soaking wet in this boat with these uh, four. Well, maybe we're somewhat strangers, but not so much anymore. Uh, I'm playing Constant Hyman. Constant uh, is, um, she is the daughter of a country gentleman in England uh, who owns quite a bit of sheep and is big in the wool trade. Uh, she is looking forward to being betrothed at one point. Uh, she is desperately clutching on to a large brocade bag, which you see uh, her staves and her dress and uh, a couple of embroidery hoops are trying to uh, escape from. She uh, has also got uh, a very wet uh, shift uh, and is trying to cover herself up with uh, her shawl and uh, her rather large blue bonnet. Uh, she has a small silver crucifix that hangs around her neck. And uh, right now she is uh, praying as deeply and desperately as she can. Okay, nice. And now we're going to go to Yong, your character. Uh, I'm going to be playing Edgar Alvin Ho. Um, he's the author of The Corvus. Um, he's the gentleman uh, who inherited quite a bit of money uh, after both of his parents perished. And uh, he's been dabbling in uh, literature and, uh, and uh, added uh, some money to his fortune by writing uh, that uh, work, Corvus. And uh, you basically see him. He's got a gigantic head like a melon, and uh, his head, his hair is dark, and uh, he he wears a very gloomy expression on his face. Uh, he seems like he's very well dressed. Uh, he comes out of the hold and says, "It seems like it's gonna be a terrible day today." And uh, yeah, that's him. Nice. Um, and we have Crystal playing Elise. <clears throat> um, yes, uh, Elise is uh, sitting in the boat. Uh, she's currently uh, uh, has a has a ferret in, uh, in like uh, her 
kind of like in her, um, I guess her hands, and she's kind of trying to uh, calm the ferret down. Uh, she's just sort of rocking, saying like, like, oh, oh, coffee, it'll be okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll make it to shore. No problem. No problem. Uh, trying to, uh, you know, reassure, reassure her, her little companion that, you know, she's not going to let anything bad happen to them. Um, yep. Yeah, Elise is actually was just an entertainer in the ship, so not wealthy. Uh, you know, she obviously had, uh, the clothes that she wears are, uh, mostly kind of like, uh, tattered and, and worn. They don't, uh, look like brand new, like some of the other, you know, people that might be on the boat, uh, or whatever. Um, you know, uh, cause she's a gypsy by trade. Okay. Thank you. And finally, we got... We flash back to the uh, night before the storm as Arturo Mendez, the libertine from Spain, is in his cabin and it flashes over to this beautiful, long, natural redhead, fair-skinned woman as he takes her dress off. As it drops to the floor, he goes, It's okay, darling. I promise I won't leave uh, too many red marks that your husband will find later. We flash up to the boat now, the boat leaving the sinking ship as he looks over and he sees the uh, beautiful young Constance that is sitting there and he notices just for a moment the wet shift and the wet clothing as she's trying to huddle up, maybe to protect herself from the cold or... He's thinking, of course, to cover up the natural, beautiful skin that she has. He sees her clutch the crucifix. And all you see in his mind is him slipping her clothes off. And she looks up at him holding the crucifix. And he goes, I am your God now. That is Arturo Mendez, the libertine from Spain. Excellent. All right. So as the the <clears throat> the companions will say... Uh, get rushed towards the the island the the you you come kind of coming in on rough waters and the boat um does anybody here have uh, any experience uh navigating with the boat at all and if not then whoever has the highest decks can make a dex roll i don't know whoever or whoever would take charge of the boat even if you don't have the highest decks, like who would grab the boat and try to uh, maneuver it in arturo looks over towards this uh edgar ho fellow and he He's probably heard it. Uh, he's a, a practicing poet also, and he goes, it is your time to shine now. Can you uh, guide us on in, much like the pen guides across the paper? Oh, the melancholy drives my hand as it shakes, and I am afraid that we shall crash onto this rock that we are headed towards. And um, his head, his hand shakes, and he says, "I shall oblige your request." And I'm gonna roll under my dex, right? Yeah, you're gonna roll a d20. You're gonna try to get under your, your uh, dexterity to see if you can kind of uh, maneuver this thing into a safe spot on the beach. Sure. Um, yeah, I roll seven under my dexterity of eleven. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, you're able to uh, coming in through the the rocks, and and uh, you're 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 you know, you're looking, and you can see these things kind of just popping up out of the water, uh, you know, little uh, points of of, of uh, stone um, that probably in low tide will be uh, will be revealed, but uh, in high tide they're just barely under the, the surface, and you, you maneuver through them pretty you know successfully, and uh, while the boat probably has a couple inches of water in it now, um, it's far from from having a problem to sink, and you, you pull up onto the you know the the, the tip of the boat hits the beach. Um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it hits the, the, the beach and then the back of it's kind of still like washing, uh, to, to, uh, you know, you don't hit it so hard that you're going to like, it basically it's going to float away. <laughs> if I can talk tonight. So yeah, it, yeah, the boat pulls in. What do you guys want to do? Arturo brushes past, uh, Edgar and Elise and he says, um, uh, let me help you with that large bag. Um, I believe your name is uh, Constance. I am Arturo. Uh, you can call me uh, Miss Hyman, Mr. Uh, 
Mendes, I believe it is, right? Uh, could you please uh, avert your eyes as uh, you help me out, please? Uh, a gentleman oh. would do that. Yes, yes, I will be glad to, to cure your bag forth. And you see he takes his hand and just rubs it along your open palm for just a moment too long. Oh, oh Mr. Mendez, <laughs> that's tickling. Oh, it's probably the uh, the cool weather coming off of the, the uh, spray of the ocean, you know? Yes, well, thank the Lord we got here. Uh, yes, it's a truly a miracle, a miracle, I tell you. When you when you mention the religion, he jerks his hand back very quick and says, "Oh, oh yes, yes, yes," and he takes your bag home to the shore. Nice. Okay, so you, you leap out of the boat. You know, it's a uh, the water's probably like just maybe past your like not quite to your knee, but maybe like you know above your ankles for sure. And you splash towards the shore, hold carrying her bag. Um, you know, and are you taking her with you or are you just your bag? He just takes the bag. Okay, you take the bag and head to the beach. What's everybody else doing? How badly is it raining? Um, it's only kind of a mist of rain coming down right now. It's not too bad. Uh, it, it's, it has stopped raining a couple hours ago, but it's very, very foggy. Okay. Uh, Elise uh, gets off of the boat, and she pulls her lute and uh, starts to strum it and uh, makes a song about uh, how, how great it is to arrive on land. The earth beneath my feet, the sand between my toes, coffee on my back. And onward we shall go. Arturo mutters under his breath, Oh, we've got too many poets on this boat. Nice. Once you upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, I had always fear that I would come into an island full of other poets. <laughs> he drops his fingers and follows along. Because you jump off the boat and head towards the shore as well. I guess if you guys have like suitcases or whatever equipment that you get, you have, might have. You'll, you're probably having some kind of a bag or suitcase or whatever, um, and you splash into the water. Uh, what, what about the poor Constance who was left on the boat? She continues to sit there. And, uh, Dear sirs, will anyone be a gentleman and help this poor woman out? Well, Mister Mister Edgar, I, I had her bag. I can go back and help her, of course, but I. So, so as as Constance, uh, you hear Constance yelling, and as you guys turn around and look back, the boat is now drifted out about fifteen foot from shore, uh, and it seems to be heading out into water. Uh -oh. Alas, Alas never no more help her. She set her foot on the shore. He says, and and um, Edgar uh, begins to uh, look up on the uh, onto the uh, blue sky and start to weep. Okay, so you're just looking around. What's everybody else doing? Oh, I believe I'm feeling a bit flush. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't seem good at all. So I alone will, will be lost at sea. <laughs> Memo, why do you not save her? You seem like a strong and strapping fellow. Should you not go after her? Arturo starts, you know, at a slow jog running, and as he does... He bumps into Edgar and pushes him and tries to push him down in the water as he's running towards Constance. <laughs> okay. No, in a, in a slow motion, the gigantic melon head of Edgar Alvin Ho uh, splashes into the water. Okay, so the boat's about uh, about 35, 40 feet from shore now. You know, you swim out to it. Um, I guess at this point, uh, you, you it's kind of moving out, and there's not really any pals or whatever, so... You'll have to, to swim back with uh, Constance if you want. <laughs> Unless you have some other way to paddle it back that you can think of. Oh, madam, madam, I'm just just put your arms around my neck and hold on tight. I will get us to shore safely. Oh, Mr. Mendez, I cannot thank you enough. You're such a kind soul. Well, I thought the other, the other person was a gentleman, but evidently his mind is, um, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll make it. Yes, such a, such furious times. It's enough to drive one mad, isn't it? Oh, madness is. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because you pull her into the into the water and, and, and swim towards the shore, you can definitely do it. It's not like it's, it's uh, you know it's tiring or whatever, but you do it. B both of you guys can. You you'll lose one small object that you have on you haven't been washed away from swimming. 
So just pick something randomly that you might have physically on you that you can all use. My shawl? That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'll be naked. You're, you're the the place, you're the place, you're have one shoe, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's see. I have a gun and a shawl. I think I'll use the shawl. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Just one small object. Give me anything. It's more this work. All right. So you see your straw float away in the water. Uh, you know, you lose it. You, maybe when you're back on shore, you see it floating out there. And you're, you're a bit chilly now. Um, not that you weren't before because you're all wet. Um, and those on the beach probably um, Elise, because you're not picking yourself up from being splashed in the water nor being saved from the uh, the water runaway boat. You notice a, a, a shadowy figure kind of walking towards you on the beach very slowly. It's kind of misty, so it's hard to make up, but it's kind of a large-ish uh, you know, large meaning like not uh, large meaning wide. So kind of short, maybe like it's uh, five, six ish tall wise, but it's a it's definitely a large. If it's a person, it's a very obese person. We'll say that. Uh, uh, Elise will um, wave her hands at the person and say hello, hello. We're over here. Like we've managed to sur to uh, to survive our our boat. Oh, excellent. So you, the, the person stops, uh, and you can you can definitely make out as you're kind of staring. You see it's like a silhouette. Uh, it turns towards you and starts walking kind of slow, almost with a limp. And then when it gets a little closer, you recognize it as a very plump uh, old lady. She's dressed um, in kind of tattered clothes, not like terribly tattered, but uh, not like perfectly new either. Um, and she, she, she walks towards you um, just as the group is kind of reforming on the beach. Um, and uh, who... Elise... Yeah, good. Uh, since Elise was like already there, uh, Elise yep. will curtsy and she will uh, say, uh, Hello, my name is Elise, and this is my companion, Coffee. Uh, you know, we come from the sea, our boat hit a rough spot. And then she will take, she has a bag full of worthless trinkets. Uh, she'll take one out and she will say, uh, Pleased to meet you. Like, here, have a lucky charm. She looks at you. Charm. Um, and and she reaches. Blessings and luck. Roll a d20. Okay. Uh, an eight. Eight. Okay. She reaches out and kind of, uh, kind of like, like touches your arm. Um, you know, to, you know, while you're handing, says you're handing her the thing. And roll a d6 for me. And that's how much damage I take. <laughs> Five. Five. Okay, your constitution goes up by one point. Nice. Um, and she kind of, uh, she doesn't say anything to you. She takes a trinket uh, and she starts to walk off into the, I mean, clearly, you, you know, you don't know what that means. You just feel a little better. Like you're feeling it down and somehow the old lady touching you um, gives you a little bit of uh, strength. Do the rest of us see her just turn and start walking yeah. off? Yeah, exactly. You see her start to walk away. You're, you're, you're oh. kind of like further down on the beach, um, but you see her. I mean, you're definitely within range that you could go up and talk to her or whatever you want. Yeah, Art Arturo starts running that way. Good good lady, good lady. Uh, we, we, we've been shipwrecked here. Uh, what, what manner of place is this that we have found ourselves? She turns towards you, uh, and she kind of, uh, she looks at you, like, you know, you're with the seas behind you, and then she kind of, like, turns her head slowly, and if you follow the way that her head's going, you can just barely see flickering lights, probably, like, maybe 10 miles away up, up over, you know, the, as la the land goes up uh, and she kind of, uh, she turns to you and, and opens her mouth and you see that she doesn't have a tongue. Oh my. And you can, you can make a, a check against your diversity. So it rolled a 20. Yep. Three out of 16. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Oh, I've seen that before. <laughs> You've probably done that before. So, yeah, so you, it doesn't freak you out too much. Um, but you see that she's uh, maybe you've heard of uh, or you've been in the circles of people that have been. Well, actually, what's your um, what's your background? I made your character. I don't remember. What's your background? Uh, your he's uh, from a wealthy family, and he's an artist poet. Oh, okay. So make an intelligence uh, check. All right. Oh, a one out of 13. Okay, so you actually have a, a an acquaintance or friend or somebody that you've done things with um, that is a 
doctor um, that found an excellent cure for for in, insane people and that were uh, uh, speaking in denom- de- demonic uh, tongues uh, and they just cut their tongue and it took uh, amazingly they stopped doing it. It's weird, but it, it was really effective. So you you kind of see the connection here, possibly. Yeah, I mean, his first thought is, of course, of the doctor's wife. And then he gets out of his image and he's like, oh, yes, I remember uh, Dr. Schneider. Uh, oh, and he's kind of saying this not too loud. I'm sure that uh, Elise can hear him, but he just, uh, uh, I don't, I he goes back to where uh, Constance and um, Edgar are. And he says, um, the good lady up there, I do believe... Uh, her tongue is missing. Do not be too, too, if you get close to her, but I believe she is a, a patient of a, of a, a sanitarium. I believe she suffers from an affliction of, 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 of sanity. Speaking in demons, I wager. Yes, of course. So uh, what, what's your charisma, uh, Chris, Elise? Uh, Elise, um, her charisma is an eight. Okay. Oh, uh, is anybody higher than that? I think Constance is for sure. Constance is twelve. Charisma, I got, a, I got a fifteen. Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she, you, you're explaining this to them, and you turn around, and she's standing kind of right near you, uh, uh, Atora, uh, and she reaches up to 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 touch you. Um, you know, like on the shoulder. And yeah, so, he, he lets her. He doesn't stop her. Yeah, yeah. If you if you uh, if you if you don't if you allow her to touch you, you should roll a d six. Arturo goes up in a puff of smoke. Uh, four. Four. Oh. Um. All all of a sudden, you kind of start looking around. You forget where you are and why you where like you're you're a bit confused. Um. You, you know, you, you're almost like the last, let's say from last night. You remember uh, the, the the redhead, uh, and then now you're here, and you, you don't remember anything since then. He looks towards Edgar and Constance, and um, if Elise has come back to there, but he looks towards this woman and he goes, uh, "Who are these people?" Just out loud, I ever won. Edgar's he, eyes roll. Walk away. Yeah. That's his goal. Edgar's eyes grow uh, wider, and he says, You seem as though you've been napping with a simple touch of her hands wrapping on your face. And uh, he studies Edgar, uh, excuse me, not Edgar, uh, Archbro a bit. Uh, could he tell whether if uh, her touch was directly responsible for something strange? I mean, that would be incredibly uh, uh, strange to you for that for you to come to that conclusion. Uh, I would think, but though you are fairly perverse, so make a perversity check. Okay, perversity. Yeah, I wrote four under fourteen. Yeah, you've probably seen weird stuff like this before, and you you could probably associate those two things together. Sure. Okay, uh, he says perhaps that woman's touch was responsible for his stupor. And uh, he relays that information Papa, to can all I the others. Well, perhaps if he weren't so rude, and in you know, point in trying to point out all of her flaws, I mean, this old lady came down to the beach, you know, to check on us, and you know, and you all are rude about you know pointing out you know her adversity. Like it's not, it's not a very kind thing to do. Well, uh. My dear slut, I did not say anything to the woman. I've not even spoken to her yet. <gasps> oh, How dare you? Oh, the language. Well, I've been accused. My my wonderful manhood has been accused of being uh, ugly to this woman. I've never seen her before. Oh, Mr. Mendes. Well, you will certainly receive no lucky charm from me. And else will turn and, and uh, follow the woman. When you turn, you don't see her anymore. She's disappeared into the mist. But you do see, uh, um, now you notice the, the flickering lights about uh, 10 miles away of the, the building. You assume it's a building. Where is the ship? How did we get here? The ship. Oh. The ship sank, my good man. 
Did you not see what just mm. happened? Mm. It was that so. terrible storm last night. And this morning, uh, when it hit the rocks, I was able to barely able to uh, steer the boat toward this beach here. Oh, my good man. Last night was not terrible. That is the wrong word. Last night was beautiful. But uh, whatever is going on now is, is very ugly. Yes. Well, unless we go towards that light, doesn't seem like we have any other alternative. Yes. I well, it would be better than being in the rain. rain. It's, it's rather dark here, too. Being night and light is much better than dark. Flickering light indicates fire from, like, usually. That's, it's... That would be much warmer, too. Yes. Come, come, Constance. Let us, let us get away from, from this mean, hurtful soul who likes to point out people's flaws and, and, in, and call them mean names. And allow barely dressed women to be so utterly cold in the wind by themselves with no coat to wear. Oh, come, come. Me. There's no need to uh, sow division amongst us. We're the sole survivors of that crash. I would say we have to stick together. At least until we could part our own, you know, uh, find our own ways out of here. Just like a man thinks so selfishly, I also say, as she, as she uh, kind of takes Constant by the arm and starts to walk up towards the, uh, towards the house with her. Well, thank you, Elise. And she snuggles in a little bit closer to you. Well, Arturo, it doesn't seem like we have much choice. Let's follow those women. Arturo looks over at Edgar and he goes, I once started this great poem that uh, it began with the lines of lying in a green meadow, your hair is flowing in the grass as my hand reaches to slap your ass. That is an excellent poem. Uh, all of a sudden, Edgar pulls out a little a piece of paper and writes, writes that down word for word real quick and stuffs it into his pocket. And he turns to Arturo. Yeah, on the second thought, maybe you could need some work there. I would Yes, yes. No. Yes, let's continue on. And you see Arturo taking off at a kind of a glancing run as he runs to try to get in front of Elise and Constance like he's the good guy leading the way now. Yep. <laughs> Edgar, uh, you know, slowly catches up with the group and smiles to, smiles, uh, to himself and says, well, it seems like there's a lot of work to plagiarize on this island. And uh, he catches up. Yeah, you, 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 you jot down the, the, the poem in your kind of soggy uh, notebook. Uh, <laughs> it's like Roy running. Uh, and you, you all catch back up together. And you're walking. The sun's starting to come up. It's uh, So the fog starts to break. Um, and you can definitely see after you've traveled maybe a, a mile or so, um, and you've kind of come up off the beach, you can see that you're crossing uh, kind of a, a, a ragged uh, plain. There's there's some you know some bushes and stuff that you see here and there, but it looks like it's the wind has done a, a you know a job to this area of the, of the island that you're on. Um, as you look further north, you can see that there there are trees and stuff, but where you are, it's kind of uh, open. So as the wind whips across, you know you're wet. Um, some of some of you have lost your shawls, um, you know, and you're you're shivering as you as you cross the the plain, um, and you see, uh, maybe like, hundred yards in front of you, uh, what looks like a man uh, running, uh, kind of at a diagonal, so he's kind of going in front of you, but uh, not in the direction that you're going, so he's not coming towards you, but he's kind of coming across, uh, of where you are, you can see him about a hundred yards out. How's he? Can we tell how he's dressed, like compared to that ever lady? Um, you can see that he's a lot thinner. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't look like he's got like you can see his shirt flapping and stuff. Um, I mean, it's hundred yards. From the yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, he's not wearing any pants, but he's got like a shirt on. Oh, Constance, uh, uh, please hide your eyes. It appears the gentleman is without uh, lower garments. Oh yes, I, w I will avert my eyes, and uh, she does. She, she kind of holds up her two hands and separates, built a small wall between the two, occasionally making a glimpse between her fingers. Arturo starts spinning his walking stick in his hands, and he's, well, I will protect us if he is uh, a beast, you know. 
Mr. Mendez, what have you done with my bag? Oh, I, I thought uh, Mr. Poe, uh, Mr. Ho, did you not pick it up from the beach? Has no one taken my bag? No, I have not picked up any bag um, along the shores. So uh, <gasps> we must return for my bag and, and uh, perhaps leave this gentleman uh, unclothed as he is. Uh, uh, let, let us, uh, a gentleman would give me a coat and pay carry my bags. Yes, yes, we must return. Well, surely we are in great dire straits, as all I see is death of great, um, the civility is gone, and I see a man running towards us with nothing but schlong. <gasps> yeah, you you should maybe make a charisma check to not pass out from that terrible thing. <laughs> I have to roll under it, right? Under you. Yes, I, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I swoon. You swoon. Mr. Ho, is that all you write about is uh, the worst of society? There are wonderful things to think about, as the lines I gave you earlier, of course. Well, writing a poem is a, a lengthy working process. Um. What shall we do about that man that's running towards us with his, uh, without any pants? Just don't let him touch you. Yeah, he's uh, not coming towards you per se. Like if, if you were to keep walking the way that you're walking, or if you're stand, standing still, I'm assuming that you're talking, he's not going to come in contact with you unless he changes course. Like he's heading like this way, you know, so you're not going to, if you just stay where you are, he'll pass you, you think. Um, Edgar waves, says, hey there, oh, fellow. <laughs> hey there. Okay, so when you wave, he turns and starts coming towards you. Go speak to the gentleman, Mr. Ho. I'm sure that his uh, slung will not bother you. He He's going to stir with his nakedness. <laughs> like, how well endowed is he? I mean, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Uh, uh, Edgar uh, looks glasses uh, glances over to Arturo and says, "Well, you bragged about your great manhood earlier. How do you feel now?" Oh, uh, you'll never know. Well, I mean, considering that it's cold, yes, is the answer to your question. Um, suddenly, so I feel a lot more the... confident. Um, yeah, he comes running towards the group. You notice that he's in kind of a tattered shirt um, and a hat. Uh, and no pants. Uh, he's wearing boots, though. Um, um, he runs up uh, towards uh, the, the whoever's in the front, which I guess would be Poe, since you walk towards him. Unless you want to make a move there, at least. So, uh, Ho, <laughs> Edgar, uh, he uh, steps up and says, Hey there, fellow. What has happened? Uh, how come you're running, running without your pants? Why are you running with your pants? Perhaps good point. Perhaps it's because it's cold. No, no, no. This weather is good for the health. You must exercise. Exercise. He starts like doing jumping jacks. Mind your shrinkish, my fellow. <laughs> As he's doing it, you know, you know, uh, the constants. <laughs> Another track. <laughs> <laughs> I totally. I, I, I put my hand to my forehead and I totally turned the opposite direction. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. one. There we go. No. There you go. We're just like, Oof. yeah. Okay, so you're looking away as the uh, the jumping jacks are, are causing some action. Um, uh, yeah. Miss Miss Constance, please, we will go get your bag now while Mister Ho takes care of uh, well this gentleman. <laughs> The hoe says, um, run along now. There's no need to do jumping jacks in front of us. Go in on. Front, in front of you. I'm behind you. I'm behind you. He starts like doing jumping jacks but moving at the same time uh, and trying to get behind you. Um, 
Edgar looks uh, greatly alarmed all of a sudden and says, No, no, stay away from me. I shall guard my behind. With my so legs. I the man and be done with it. <laughs> and he says, Move along now. Move along. Does it mean like a, a small coin or something? So that he may leave? And Edgar uh, starts, uh, you know, uh, uh, going towards uh, the flickering light with a, a slight jog, trying to get away from the man. Okay, you you notice that he's kind of following you. He's like he's like half like he he's a jumping jack running like he's like running with his arms flapping like this. Uh, what's Elise doing? Uh, Elise will actually pull back to talk to him and say, "So, like, did you uh, did you crash land here as well?" Yes, 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 I did. From the moon. Oh, wow. I've always wanted to go to the moon. Mm, it's warm up there. Huh. Wow. That's so intriguing. Do they, do they not wear pants often on the moon? No. No pants on the moon. No pants on the moon. Interesting. Perhaps it's because they're lunatics. Don't insult another culture you know nothing about. I try to hush myself so that only you can hear. That doesn't make it any better. You still said it. He shrugs. <laughs> the guy's kind of looking at you. He's, he's, he's uh, if you stop and you're talking, he's just saying, he stopped doing jumping jacks now. He's just kind of like fidgety. Like he just kind of, he's looking at you. He's like, are you going, are you going to the, to, to, to the house? Are you going to the house? Well, that's where we were on our way to. Do you know who lives there? Demons. And my friend Paul. He also lives there. Ah. Well, will your friend Paul protect us from the demons? Probably not. Hmm. Well, Be careful when you're sleeping because he enjoys to eat people. Well, just their feet. So, you know. Oh. That's why I wear my boots. I mean, I've done that before, so you know, it's okay. Can we not talk to this person anymore? <laughs> Can we just uh, make him go away? Uh, Elise will pull out a trinket from her pocket and say, Here, here, take this charm. May it protect you from any evils that would seek to harm you, my friend. He takes it and he kind of looks at it. And he's looking around, he doesn't have any pockets, trying to figure out where to put it. And then he puts it somewhere. Run off, good sir. Chase the windmills that need to be defeated. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, the windmills. He gets on the ground and he starts like swinging his arms around like a like like a windmill. And oh, now seems to... on on Ford on. Uh, come on, Mister Ho, uh, lead the way. Are you, are you going to go back for the bag, <laughs> or not? Oh yeah, yeah. I can say. Yeah, I mean, it's we, a mile we, back there. <laughs> yeah, we go back after Constance's bag. Okay, because it's, it's a mile back from the beach, so. <laughs> are, you guys, are you all going back? Uh, or, how so late is it? I mean, it's, it's the sun's only just up, so it's like, you know, whatever, 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, it's October, so it's probably like, yeah, about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, at least we'll take Constance by the hand and say, like, uh, say, uh, they'll bring your bag to the house. Let us continue on our way. Yes, uh, let's do that. And, and perhaps we, we must get, get out of the rain. Yes. And some tea and some comfortable clothing and maybe some shoes. Well, Mr. Achiro, I can't leave these two uh, ladies all by themselves. What if that naked mantle uh, come back to us and accost us? That'd be what are you going? What are you going to do? Uh, write a sonnet to stop him? Of course, I would shoot him in the face. Oh my violence! Uh, such words from. A man of the, the the wordsmith. Well, when one has uh, run out of words, one must back it up with a pistol. <laughs> he pulls out a pistol. Do you even know how to use that thing, good sir? Well, I could tell you all about it. How I failed the officer school. <laughs> uh, yes, you. 
You protect the good ladies. I will go and retrieve the bag, and I will come to the house myself. Uh, I imagine Elsa's has just, like, grabbed Constance and, like, it's now, like, skipping off. So, like, you two are standing there chatting, and, like, we're, like, 50 feet away from the house. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you're you're going up. So so we're out of here. Yeah. So oh, if you want to catch them, you'll just have to run. You know, you yeah, he runs. He runs. All right. That's cool. So you guys are going towards the the building. I mean, depending on how quickly you go, it, theoretically, if you were to go fast, uh, a tour, you probably could get the bag and catch back up to him because the 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 building's some ten miles away. So yeah, he t- he really takes his time on the walk back and um. On the walk back to the beach, he stops and pulls out a little vial, and he opens it up and takes just a small sip of his laudanum. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're, uh, you're you're taking your time and enjoying yourself. Uh, you know, maybe seeing some interesting sights. Uh, and you guys are heading towards the apps. Check here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll just cut, you know, cuts in there. Nothing more kind of uh, exciting happens. Per se, you get to the beach, you get to bag, bring it up. Uh, you, you probably can catch up to them if you, if again, uh, depending, uh, or you guys, are you guys, are you going to wait at the house before you go in or are you going to uh, go in and then you can catch up to you inside? How do you guys want to handle that? So we'll, we'll go to you first. Cause you're going to get there probably. I mean, you got to go back. He's got two miles extra on you. Plus he's taking his time. So he's going to be at least half an hour to an hour behind you. Yeah, I, think, I imagine uh, Elise, when she gets to the house, she'll just skip merrily up the front porch. Uh, does coffee react to this house in any way? Uh, coffee- hey, it's not so much a house uh, as you approach it. So when you get close to this place, uh, it's a house, all right, but it is huge. It's basically uh, kind of like what you might consider a castle, although much more kind of in, in a... A more basic style, like an older castle, like a medieval castle. It's not all, uh, you know, glorious and, and gothic. It's very kind of uh, flat stonework, um, and it's very big. Um, so there's no porch, per se, like a front porch, but there is kind of, as you're facing it, there's a, um, there's kind of a clear, you know, path that heads to, to a large door in the front uh, of it. As uh, soon as Edgar realizes how large that castle is, he begins to hug himself and, you know, going to a, a bit of a fit. He's like, ah, too big, too big. Ah, ah. And he's shaking and, and going basically crazy. Uh, it just happens that his phobia is megalophobia. Ex- uh, fear of exceptionally large things. Yeah. Oh, see, if I had known that when you met the guy with the naked, the naked guy. But, uh, <laughs> yes, you... you uh, no, yeah, it's it's big. I mean, it's a big house. I thought you said it was cold. <laughs> I guess you're lucky it was cold. Yeah, so you, you, you guys get there. You, you can see from a distance, you know, before. And also, what you do notice for sure is there are definitely, um, on what you would imagine would be the first, it's two stories. Uh, what would you imagine would be the, the first floor? You see that, that kind of pathway that leads to kind of an entrance area that has a kind of a gate that's open, and then it goes through and into a door. Um, you don't see too many windows. In fact, you don't see any windows on the first floor. On the second floor, you do see windows. Um, and through those windows, you can see, again, that, that kind of flickering light. So, yeah. Constance will drop to her knees just before the door and offer up a small prayer. Uh, may, may the Lord bless this house for their generosity and charity that they will extend. Yes. Um, amen, and else will, will skip over to the door, and she will knock upon it. If there's a knocker, she'll use the knocker. Okay, so you you kind of, so basically you've got this, uh, I'm trying to describe it, you've got uh, what is kind of like a, an, a hallway that's open to the, to the outside, so in a sense, like, it's a hallway, but there's no door door on it, there's a gate, so when you kind of walk into that hallway, you move down about 20 feet or so, um, and it's just, like, gravel there. It's when you get to the doors, which are large wooden doors. Um, and there's actually a, uh, you know, they've got the like, handles on them. There's a chain running through the handles with a uh, with a big lock on it. 
Um, it's old and rusty. Let's see. It's but they're big, heavy doors. Let's see. Okay, that's all I can see from here. So yeah, no, the big, heavy doors. They have that like um, like a slide thing. Like if you knock on the door and somebody wants to answer, they can slide through and look at you. Uh, you do notice that on there. The doors themselves are like I said, big, heavy wood. Though they're they are quite old, but they're uh, they're big, heavy wood. There isn't like a a formal like lock or key on the door, but there's a, a chain locking it. Uh, Constance, I don't believe that the Lord was hearing your prayers today. It seems that they don't want company. Oh, I believe the Lord heard me. I just don't know if they heard us. Um, uh, hello? Hello? Is there anyone here? Uh, Constance will go ahead and uh, take the, I mean, Constance, I'm sorry. Elise will go ahead and take the uh, the lock where the, the lock pad is at, and she'll use that as a knocker to, to knock on the door. Okay, yeah, you do that, and... Uh... You hear, uh, you hear a, a, a voice. Uh, sounds like a man's voice. It says, "Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Unless you have food." No, no, nobody's home. I don't think anybody's home, dear. Yeah, they said there. A voice inside said, "No one's home." Yes, it's. Uh, we should probably find another place then. Um, is there another place around here that, that people will be home at? Home is where the heart is. Home, home is where the heart is. Nobody's home. We need some provisions. We were shipwrecked. Without your help, surely we would perish. He said home is where the heart is, and then he said no one's home. So I think he means that he has no heart. No, no, hey, don't take that to literally. Nice. I didn't get well, you did. I, I'm sure it's a servant who's saying the master is at home right now. And so yeah. we shouldn't bother the poor man. I mean, if the master of the house isn't home, then... Uh, yeah, I'm the master. The master. Hold on. What? I'm confused now. Nobody's here. See, Let, no, no one's here. Let us in, my friend. Walk must I like a prisoner resigned to his fate? Or shall I like a dog to enter this gate? Ooh, that was a good one. He starts writing it down. I don't want to finish. Have you got food? Have you got any food? I do have some food. Oh yeah, stew. Have you got stew? Oh, I stew. I have a cooking pot, and I can I can make us something to eat. Okay, let me know when it's done. Well, I need a fire to make something to eat, and there would be a fire inside, you know, like a stove. No, oh, we don't allowed to have fire. My dear man, we've had a terrible accident. Our ship has been wrecked. And we're wet and cold. You must let us in, for we shall rap on your gate. And he knocks on the gate. Whoa. Don't do that. It's aggravating. Well, you tell us. We're very aggravated because we're wet and cold. Without your aid, surely we would perish, like I said before. And some of us are unclothed. You wouldn't well, have to get some extra clothes, would you? Wait, how's he going to let us in anyway? Look, the, the door is chained. Oh, I, mean, I don't think he'd let us in even if he wanted to. Oh, I could let you in. I could let you in. Don't say that. Liar. No. Well, prove it. Prove it. No. Let us in. Prove that you can let us in then. I could, I could do it. Go. No, you can't. You can't let us in. That's why you're not doing it. No, I could. I could let you in. I could. I could do it right now. I don't believe you until we're actually in there. Oh, I think yes, we I need to believe him. I don't believe you at all. I, I believe him. 
I, I mean, I'm sure he sounds like an honest man. No, no, she's not. She doesn't believe you either. Uh, I, but I do. She doesn't I believe, believe you because that. because you haven't done it. If you could let us in, then you would let us in. The you man is bluffing. You cannot. Yeah, well, I'm. I will let you in, but then you have to go back out after because uh, he's not supposed to be here because you're not giving me any food. Well, I'll get I'll get food as soon as you let us in. The little slide thing opens up. You don't see anybody because it's, it's uh, you know, nobody sticks their face into it. But uh, but a hand comes up and a key drops out under the ground and then it closes. Oh, well, see, he, he could let us in. And El, uh, Elise will pick up the key and uh, undo the padlock. Uh, it doesn't fit the lock. Ah, see, he still can't let us in because this doesn't fit the lock. Oh, my dear man, you me. gave us the wrong key. Oh, oh, hold on. The thing slides open again. And then, like, one after another, about 15 keys come through the hole. Oh, this is a game, I see. I yeah. like games. I do love games. I still love them. Okay, let's see if we can figure out which one this one does. Coffee, what do you think? And uh, Elise will begin to pick up the keys. She'll let Coffee sniff one, and then she'll try it. And then she'll let Coffee sniff another, and then she'll try it. I think we're supposed to each try a key. I think that's the game. I think the game is we each have a key, and then we each try it. Edgar shouts back at the man. Well, I would like to make a wager. Are you a gambling man? Yeah, what, 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 yes. I still say that you can't let us in. If we could go in, then uh, you let us stay in there. If you can't let us in, uh, wait, that's not what I meant to say. Uh, if you are able to let us in, then I will give you everything that I have in gold, if I have any. But if you can't, then you let us stay in there. What good is gold when there's no stew? Stew is worth gold, golden stew. Well, stew. then I, I promise you that I'll give you stew if you can let us in. You've but seen you, stew? But if you can't That's let us know. in, if you can't let us in, then you will let us stay in there. Does that sound fair to you? But, but I did let you in. I let you in. No, we're still standing outside. Uh, at least we're still trying keys. Are you sure? Are you sure you're outside? Yeah, we're still standing outside. Maybe you just think that you're outside. Hmm, good point. But he turns and looks at uh, looks at Constance and Elise. Says, "Well, do any of those keys fit?" So you're going through. You're you're hogging all the keys and going through them. Yes, uh, Constance. I, I least try to. <laughs> Constance wants to try, but you're not letting her. <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah. like if Constance comes up and asks for a key, then certainly she'll give Constance some keys. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like. She's not gonna, you know. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if that was what I didn't realize that was what Constant was doing. Constant. Okay. She thinks it's a party game. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna give Constance like half the keys, and then you know they can take turns trying their keys. This is so suspenseful. Yeah. <laughs> so you uh, every time Elise tries a key that doesn't work, she's just gonna add it to her bag of trinkets. Okay. So you're sitting there. It's about time Arturo should be back. Right. So just just about the time. So the fourteenth key <laughs> unlocks the door. Uh, click. You hear it clicking just as you do. You hear shuffling behind you as a Toro kind of pulls up into the. Uh, the you look upon a sight of uh, these guys in front of a door. Uh, Lady uh, Constance, uh, I have your bag here. As you're turning to look at it, it's probably much flatter. Than what it was. I mean, it's it's. You can tell that it's probably not has everything in it that was probably that you had in there. Are, are my stays and dress in there at least? 
Well, I figured that you would only need the most important things, you know, so I kind of left some of the watered down objects on the beach, you know. She said, oh, this will not do. This, this won't do. <laughs> so my dress is not here or my stays. Well, uh, I'm sure that uh, you will find plenty of, of good good clothing in here that you can use. My good man, you would have me go around naked all day? Is that what you want? Yes, of course I do. I mean, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, that would be a, that would be a shock to the system for Mr. Ho, but uh, oh, for me, I don't know. I've done it before, Constance. It's actually kind of fun. Oh, I'm sure plenty Look, of men have seen it. You got the right key. Yeah, I'm sure plenty of men have seen you. I won. I got the key. I got the key. Constance, at, at hearing that uh, at least a they make it at some point. You should probably make a check to see if you faint. That's that. That feels faintable. Oh, <laughs> yes, I faint. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of the young woman next to me, flour, frolicking naked, puts me over the edge. <laughs> oh, is that what the men do when they see you, Elise, naked too? They just faint. Uh, not quite. Mr. Ho, uh, brush uh, some water on her forehead or something. I mean, come on, lady. We got to go inside. We just won the wager. It was not him who let us in, but it was us. So in the end, he could not let us in after all. So he will let us stay, yes? You hear, you hear kind of, it's much more muffled than the voice that you had heard before. And he says, I let you in. No, you didn't. We let ourselves in with these keys. I did let you in. I gave you the key. No, you were supposed to let us in, but you didn't do it. We used the keys ourselves. So you lost the wager. Now you let us stay. That's not fair. Who is this hooligan behind the door? It seems to be some kind of a servant. I don't know, but uh, he was refusing to let us in and give us hospitality. We'll pick up Miss Ho off the ground and let's go forth. And Arturo will go up and after they open the door and just try to push it open. It, it pushes right open. You're looking into like a short hallway, maybe 10 feet long. Uh, at the end is another set of doors um, that are like kind of, they're, they're like partially open. Um, and there's nothing else of note in the hallway. It's basically empty. So you don't see the, the guy. The guy, oh, he's disappeared. Yeah, you, you, um, just roll a d20, I guess. All right. Uh, five. Good. Um, you hear a noise, and you look up, and you can see above you, there's uh, several holes in the ceiling, like decent-sized holes, and you can hear somebody kind of moving around up there. Hmm. It seems that there are plenty of people in this, uh, uh, this place, uh, we sh probably should just, uh, let's find the fireplace, though, and warm up. Edgar uh, props up Constance and says, come on, lady, let's go inside. Wake up, wake up. You know, I, I kind of think we should only stay for a night, and then in the morning, we should set off on a new adventure to find a place not so big. Oh, I'm sure that there will be rescue boats coming any time. Oh, yes, for sure. Some place a lot smaller than this place. Yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so, you know, uh, after a few, you know, uh, short span of time, Constance wakes up. Um, and you splash water in or whatever. Um, so you hear kind of a muffled voice. You, you guys recognize the voice of the guy that you were talking to, but everybody but Toro, of course. Um, but Toro standing there, you realize it's coming from above where you notice those holes, and he says, which one of you is cheating? Well, who's the poet? This one. Yeah, I'm going towards Mr. Ho. <laughs> Edgar points at Arturo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, you both point at each other simultaneously, and then the uh, from the hole in the roof, like an arm, like reaches down and it has like a big ladle, um, like you'd scoop soup with, and he tries to splash uh, something on you, which is actually. Uh, hot. Uh, Can we try to uh, like defend? I mean, because I got yeah. that walking cane, like try to strike his arm. 
Oh, you want to try to get him before he got you? All right, we'll do it that way. Sure. Um, we're we're going to roll initiative, so roll a d6. Just one. That's by side of initiative. So roll. A five. Ooh, you got a five, too. Roll again. Oh, actually, yeah. Ooh, a six. <laughs> get a six, too. One more time. Oh, my gosh. It's a one. Oh, no, a one. Oh, okay, all right. So, no, but you can make a – you can need to roll under your decks to avoid it. Do we, oh, do God, I fail. Do 18, yeah, 18 out of 12. Oh, no, I got, I got 14. <laughs> so I, I failed too. You both get much. It's only, it's one point of damage, but it is lethal damage because it's burnt. So you, you get hit by some, some, some hot uh, oil. Like he's been frying something up there or something. He splashes you with the oil. Uh, but now you can go. So if you want to whack his hand or whatever, you can. Oh, you can yeah, I'm going to knock the fire out of him after he dumps it on me. So it's <laughs> um just D20, right? Yeah, it's D20 uh, under your dexterity, or if you want, well, are you trying to, what are you going to do, just hit them with the cane, like, bluntly? Yeah, I just want to hit them as hard as I can with the cane and maybe make them drop the ladle. Okay, so you can use either strength or dex if you're doing bludgeoning damage. Oh, uh, six, so it's under both of them. Okay, so do a D6 damage. Oh, so six. Did- <laughs> yeah. You hit him right like uh, in this part of the arm, and it snaps back. You break his arm, and he drops the ladle. And you can see the broken arm. He pulls it back up, screaming in pain. Come down here, you bastard, and face me in person. Mr. Mendez, the language, please. I was just about to ask if, if Edgar just dropped the unconscious Constance. <laughs> the language won't you know. be up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just want... <laughs> because you just saw the arm break, so go ahead and make another check. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> I swung and hit the back again. Yes. Oh. Edgar tries to catch her. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, she's swinging. You can catch her. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you, um, you hear like uh, panting above uh, from and whimpering from this guy. Uh, you know, you just broke his arm. Yeah, is there? Do I see like a stairwell to run upstairs? Not here, no. you, you, you have to. You, you, all you see right now is at the end of the hallway is a set of doors. Pick her up, Miss Ho, and oh, I'm sorry, Mister Ho, and let's let's continue on. We need to find a one of those couches or something to put her on. Uh, this is just too much for the young lady. Yeah. And I had to oh, wash the doors. Uh, no. shit. She's a lot heavier than I thought. Maybe we should just wake her up. Oh, you never say that to a lady, my goodness, good man. <laughs> well, she's not here to listen to us talk about it. Yes, but this har- uh, this uh, lady here will maybe speak of the old we have done. Uh, you say this lady here, and Ellis is like already inside looking for a place so she can make a fire. Um, oh, so you go through the door? First, oh yeah, yeah. So. Like I'm, like I've, I like I've already walked in. Like I, I don't even know about the oil and stuff. Well, no, you you didn't because you were behind everybody. Oh, I was that? Well, you didn't say I, I was at the door. I was at the door trying the keys with constant. Yeah, and then Tony said he walked in, and then this whole encounter happened. That yeah, there's it's a different okay. set of doors. Either it's way, a different yeah. set of doors, Crystal. I'm sorry. Yeah. So That's yeah, fine. okay. This conversation, you go in front and you walk. That's fine. You walk through the door. Uh, so, okay. You into a uh, again, these doors are bi- like partially open, so you can just walk through if you want. Um, you're in kind of a large room. It's a uh, 30, 40 feet uh, deep, like straight ahead of you, and then it goes basically you're you're far on the left side of it. So uh, to the right of you, it's like another like almost like a, like a hundred feet long, but there is like another like smaller room that sticks out. But anyways. Uh, on the west wall of the room is a huge mural, uh, no, mural, one more. Uh, it's a huge mural. Um, uh, oh, it smells tr- tremendously terrible. It's a huge mural and is painted in, uh, entirely in human feces. Make a check of your uh, uh, perversity, please. Okay, yeah, that that definitely is something I could. Oh, 19. Oh, no, I can't stand that. Okay, yeah, so you're going to actually suffer for, for a minor delusion for a second, but uh, I actually think that up first. Roll, roll a d100. Uh, okay. Um, three. A 52. 
All right. Oh, <laughs> to the right of you. Okay. Oh, you suddenly believe, all of a sudden you realize you have this, uh, as you look upon this beautiful feces last supper, um, that you realize that the reason why uh, a Toro has been uh, so cross with you is because he's actually in love with you. Oh my gosh, it makes total sense. Yeah. See you it. notice too, as he, as he kind of busts in behind you, Toro, you see the feces thing as well. You can make a roll too on your your perversity. Oh, four out of 16. <laughs> okay, you're fine. You're like, ah, feces are wonderful. Um, you notice that uh, in the, hold on, which character is it? Oh, in the, in the, uh, the la far, on the far left, which would be the Apostle uh, Bartholomew, it's actually not a painted person, but actually a person um, who is naked um, and covered completely uh, in feces to mix in with the painting. And you can just kind of see his eyes looking at you as he's kind of part of the, the, the painting. Step out from there, you dashly villain. What are you doing? Okay. He sees you, and so at that, you, don't, you know, you definitely notice him. He, uh, he screams, La! I need more red, and he pulls out like a like a, a palette knife, uh, and he's going to try to attack you. Actually, oh, good, bring it on. Yeah, so roll initiative. <laughs> Three. Great. All right, the initiative for the bad guys. Four. All right, he's going to go first. Um, should you yell at him? He's going to attack you. Um, then it, it's side initiative, so your whole side can go. So Crystal, you'll be able to go, and everybody else. Um, he's going to try to stab at you, so he's going to roll. Um, you don't have any armor, so he's just going to. He's got a ten deck, so he's going to roll ten or under to hit you with the pallet knife. Oh, you rolled a three. Uh, he jabs into you with the pallet knife, um, and it does one point of damage. All right. Yeah, I and mean, it's not very sharp or anything. Um, and now it's your side uh, can go, so you might as well go first because you're right there. And then yeah, I'm fixing to try to whack him in the head with my walking stick, man, because it okay, seems cool. to do pretty good. Uh, let's see. That is going got to be under dex, right, or strength? Uh, under strength or dex, whichever one you. Yeah, choose. it's gonna fail. That's a fifteen. Okay. Yeah, he he jumps out of the way. Um, you know, his his uh, he's fleet feeted and it, yeah, fleet footed and naked. Uh, at least what would you like to do? Naked uh, feces man. Uh, yeah, at least uh, she's gonna grab her uh, cooking pot. And she's just gonna try and whack him in the head and try and knock him out. She definitely doesn't want to hit him with her bare fist as he's covered in feces. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so you can use your strength if you're trying to just bludgeon him, or you can use your dexterity, whichever is better. You're trying to roll under. Um. Okay, and I have a plus one to boxing. Does that help? Not if you're swinging a pot. Boxing. Okay. Okay, and, and it's just. And I have to, and I have to go under what? Under either your strength or your dex. It, it's it's normally dex, but you can use strength if you want. You're just trying to like swing something heavy at him. Okay. Uh, and I got a two, which would be under both of those. That definitely hits. So uh, do a d six. Um, six. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, good. Yeah, you hit him, and he, he staggers back and drops the knife and falls on his butt. Um, blood is dripping down the side of his face. Um, that kind of looks... Look quickly, he's, don't ruin my painting! He raises his hands up to protect it. Can I run over and grab the uh, pallet knife away from him? Or run from yeah, it's on the ground. Yeah, you can grab it. It's, it's, it's got feces all over it, but, you know. Yeah, I ju I'm just going to take it and, like, throw it behind me, like, on the other side of the room, you know, somewhere out of his reach. Okay. Yeah, you knock it away from him, um, and he looks at you, and he says, uh, uh, this is my masterpiece, and as you're kind of looking at it, you can see that in the center where, where Christ would be, the, the uh, you know, the, it's actually a pretty good painting, considering that it's, uh, you know, completely made out of feces. Um, uh, the uh, the Christ figure has a, 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 an extra large head with many mouths and eyes, um, and, of course, the Bartholomew uh, is not there because he was that. Um, otherwise, uh, the painting looks actually pretty darn good, considering. I yell back at Mr. Ho. Mr. Ho, did not bring the innocent woman in here. It is uh, too much for her little faint heart, even though she's already faint, but she will not awaken in here. Do not come in here, gentlemen. What do you see in there? Oh, it is a horrible sight. And um, uh, Edgar uh, wakes Constance up and says, 
Well, it seems like there's something horrible in there. I'm afraid if you go in there, you're going to faint again. Mr. Ho, is there a reason why you're trying to embrace me while I'm half naked? You were about to hit your head against the ground, so I saved you from this devastating blow. Well, unhand me, sir. This is most, most unacceptable. But, but of course, madame. He lets her uh, lose. So uh, there's problems in the other room? <clears throat> what exactly happened down there, Arturo? Elise? Oh, it's just another naked man, except, oh, this one's more than the other one. Did you hit him? Well, he hit me first. He left us no choice. He attacked us. Do, could you describe what you're seeing in there? I'd rather not. In fact, I'm ready to leave now. So, so, so the man says, when you say to him, either you he attacked your face, you were trying to deface my painting. If Horror Face finds out you were doing it, He'll destroy us all. Oh, oh I, I promise that you. I don't want to have anything to do with that painting. How come it smells like shit in there? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Ho! Oh. <laughs> so you would notice, by the way, too, in this room, so essentially, like I said, it's kind of a long rectangular shaped room. There is actually right against the door, um, you know, right next to the door that you came in, there's like a ladder that's formed into the wall, and you can see there's like a like a crawl space, maybe like three feet deep. Um, that was probably how you get up where the guy threw this, the stuff at you. That's, that's probably where where he was or is. Um, you haven't seen him leave. Um, and like I said, if you look to the right, you can see uh, it's pretty long, uh, but you see there's a couple of doors at the end, and there's one kind of in the center. There's basically in this large like auditorium type room. There's like a smaller room that seems to be built uh, into it. Like that room's wooden, whereas the Outside room is, is made of stone, so you can tell it's like an extra room that was built. Um, Arturo, so there's that door. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. But, so there's that door, and then you see a couple doors at the end, and then, like I said, you see the ladder. Yeah, Arturo looks over towards you, Lee, and we have got to find out whoever is in charge of this place. They must be somewhere. Horror face, horror face. Yeah. Oh, where is he? Tell me, where is the great horror face? He, uh, he raises his finger and he points to the, 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 the Last Supper with the, the strange Jesus. He says, uh, he sees all. He is above us. Oh, never religious, Net. You know, I'm beginning to think that maybe this island is, is supposed to be an asylum. Maybe it was abandoned and they left all the patients here. Well, they should all be dead by now. They would not be able to cure and tend for themselves as we have already seen. Yeah, well, we don't know how long ago it was, to be fair. We must move forth, move forth. Uh, Miss Constance, you need to avert your eyes the other direction. Uh, maybe Mr. Ho should put his arm around your shoulders and escort you on through. Yeah, plug your nose as well. Plug my nose. Uh, and uh, allow Mr. Ho to escort me. I have that. But first, let's pray. Merciful God in heaven, it was your angels to send upon us and bring us clothing for all these poor naked fellows. Oh, you merciful God's the one that crashed us upon this hell place. Come now, Lady Constance. You can pray as we walk. Why, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ho. Very, very gentlemanly of you. Um, as Ho leads her, uh, you know, uh, looking looking at her, how uh, she's got her eyes closed, he begins to describe what has happened. Um, you know, he, he says, "Well, um, here we go." He says, "Gruesome deeds and painted shit." Uh, let's see, out comes Kerr that fits in shit. Hear the blessings of a meal. Hear the man that we should heal. Um. That's going to need some work. And um, he joins Arturo and Elise with Constance. Yeah, I was going to say, Arturo's probably, he's moved on down to that next set of doors to, to go, that, go in that direction. Yeah, Elise, yeah, Elise as well. I'm like, she does not want to stay in here. Yeah, so when you, when, you, when you walk in, you see the guy has gotten up, the naked guy. 
Of course, only the front of him is covered in, in uh, feces because he was part of the painting. So, like, you basically see the, the backside of a naked man. Um, and he's he's actually dabbing the blood from his face uh, where, where his face got kicked in by the pot. And he's, like, adding red to certain areas of the... Uh, the painting um so the first the first door that you would pass um leads into that like wooden room that's built inside this space if you want or you can go past that and there's two other doors yeah i'm past okay yeah. so you go past it uh to your left is a, a door uh that goes into the check uh and it's closed it's a pretty heavy door um this has a regular uh kind of a, a lock on it. You know, it's got like a lock where you put a key. Uh, Miss Elise, did you not have a key earlier, or do you think it would fit this door? Uh, yeah, I have several keys. She'll start pulling some out, start trying them. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're doing that, and the, the rest of the, the crew joins you, um, and you, you find one that fits. You, you would notice, too, that this other door that's that you see in this room seems like it's an exterior door, like you'd get outside. So basically, if you had like gone around the building, um, you would have come to the store, um, and you can see that it's actually, um, it's got like a bar across it. So you'd have to be like from the outside, you wouldn't be able to get in here anyways. Um, but if you wanted to leave, you could pop the bar and go out. You would, and you don't know what's out there though, but of course. Um, so yeah, the, you find the key, it turns and click, the, it's unlocked. Okay. Yeah, I'll open it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So you step up, well, you look into, you don't step into um a room it's about 20 feet wide you know on the end that you walk in about 40 or so feet long almost immediately to your right there's a door um so you could like walk in the room and then go out a door um but you see tons and tons of shelves uh and tables and you see a very old lady um she's dressed uh as you would probably think, assume a physician would dress she has like the mask over her face almost like she's doing a surgery and she's got like this like white coat on and her hair is all covered um and she looks at you and, and uh, she says, uh, thieves, thieves, stay away. And she pulls like a scalpel. Uh, Elise will shut the door. <clears throat> she stops screaming. At least she's, the, she's right. the only one in the room. That's all you saw, yeah. I mean, she didn't, it's just like she was there. Arturo's closed up in the room with her van because he would have he walked oh, in the room. Oh, I thought. Oh, okay. okay. I That's fine. I don't have to watch. You're gonna slam the door shut, but a is gonna step in before you do that. Okay. A tour oh. steps in. You do not want to close the door if he steps in, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if he steps in, I wouldn't close the door. I would instead just be like, Arturo, come on. Like no, like, no no no. We're gonna like we'll find another room. Yeah, you know, Arturo okay. ignores you. He steps in and Dear lady, uh we are not of the thieving talk. Can you not tell by the uh the rich clothing I am wearing. I am a man, a, a gentleman. Look, um, Arturo, I know you're trying to impress me and all, but you don't you don't have to. Come on. Does the lady react to me speaking to her? She does. She starts close. She says, You're clearly suffering from delusions. Come, let me uh, let me analyze you. Oh yes, uh, it's just what I need. Uh, uh yes, yes. Uh, what, what 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 must I do? Come no, for it. Move your shirt. Remove your shirt so I can check your heart. I think she's oh. going to try to cut out your heart, Arturo. Stay back. I think she's surely addled. Are they, or is Hoen in there, too, or is it just us? Well, two? they're in the hallway. I mean, oh, they okay, they, they did make it down. I didn't know if they made it down that far. Okay. Yeah, they made it to you. Yeah, they're with you. Arturo. Yeah, so was in front of the door by the time you unlocked it. Yeah. Arturo, Arturo don't, don't play so brave. Uh, you don't have to try to impress me. I, I'm already impressed with you enough. Come on. Clearly, this I'm go- mad. I'm going to walk up to the lady and uh, pretend like I'm going to unbutton my shirt. But as soon as I do, I want to reach and grab for her arm and try to break the scalpel loose from her hand. Okay. Yeah, you definitely do that. So we'll, we'll call it a contest. Uh, so the way this works is it would be your dex versus her strength. Let me just roll her strength because it doesn't say what this way. Okay, so you only have a six strength. So if you have, a, I'm assuming your dex is more than six. So a twelve. Okay, so you, so you get to roll because the person with the highest uh, attribute rolls, and basically because she is, you are six points higher than her. Um, just check. You also get a minus three. Okay, so basically. 
No, no, she goes. The lowest person goes. So she has basically, she has to roll a three or better or under, rather on a d20 to avoid it. So I'm going to roll that. She rolled 16. So you snag her arm and she drops the the the, uh, the scalpel or, for, you know, and you're holding her by the wrist. Yeah, and I, you know, I'll push her back forcefully as I'm, you know, maybe try to push her back and hold her and reach down with my other hand and grab the scalpel. Okay, so at this point, because you're, uh, well, you, I assume you grabbed the one with the scalpel, no? Did you grab the scalpel hand or not? Yeah, yeah, I grabbed the scalpel hand. Okay, yeah, so you, you grab it. She lets go because she's like a week old. So you, you, you got to push her back. Now we'll go into initiative, though, because she might try to do something before you can get it. A four. <laughs> she also got a four. One more time. Two. Six. Okay, you can do it. You want to do yeah, I'm just gonna like, push her back, you know, and hold her back as I reach down and grab the scalpel from my other hand. Oh, on the ground. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so so you you grab it. Um, but yeah, she she has to make that same check, which is not gonna be. Let me just check. Yeah, eleven. You 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 got her basically under your control. She's pretty weak, being an old lady. Yeah, I'll take her and you'll know, put her down in a chair as I tell the others, please come on in. We must we must investigate everything we find. If there's something terribly wrong here, this lady is not a staff member. Um, Edgar uh, rushes in and he says, I believe this woman's mind is thoroughly addled. I declare the woman's hind is thoroughly paddled. <laughs> uh, oh. Are you going to faint on that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Ho, that reminds me of the time that I had Lady Raven Rue and we were in the Rue Morgue and I took out the whip and I, well, never mind. I'll tell you the rest of the story later. <laughs> Another story, a rousing story, I say. So as you're distracted by this, she reaches kind of behind her and she pulls out a, like a spray bottle and she tries to spray you, uh, uh, a Toro. <laughs> uh, let's go for spray. Let me see. She has a, a spray, a drug spray. Uh, does she have to take an attack? You get a save. You get a deck save to avoid it. So make a roll. Up. Yep, roll into your deck. Oh, no, we're not tame. All right, so you're getting sprayed. It's, it, it's a psychotropic drug. So it's oh going to be uh, uh, a delusion. So roll a d100 to see what it is. <laughs> uh, 13. 13. You have recently returned from adventuring on the planet Mars and can't wait for the planets to align so you can go back. Oh, man. I look over back towards um, Elise and I go, we should never worry about the moon. The moon is something that Mr. Ho will write about. I must return to the great planet, the planet that stars dream of like myself. It is planet Mars, the red planet. Oh, the women there are so beautiful. Well done, she claps. She claps at that. You're such a wonderful actor, Mr. Mendez. Oh, it's not acting, my dear lady. You, you are not, oh, the women, that the, the curves and their sim symmetry of their, uh, oh, never mind. Could um, could Ho uh, uh, jump up and try to snatch that from that lady? Yeah, I was gonna say probably because it, you, you this thing splashed, you probably step back and you had this delusion. She probably let go of her, so she she starts to get up and try to move towards the back of the room. So if you want to move on her, let's roll initiative. Yeah, so, uh, I want to move on her. Elise is gonna try and grab that stuff as well. Okay, yeah, it's not initiative, so uh, I got five. Ooh. Okay, you gotta go first. So go ahead. Uh, I guess because Young's both first, so you go. Oh, actually, yes. Yeah, so let's do it the way that the uh, the game is designed. We go by decks. So, who, who, what's your decks? Uh, oh. It's thirty eleven. Okay, yeah. you go first. Okay. okay. Yeah. So a uh, ho and then uh, Elise. What do you want to do? Uh, is there, yeah. Is there anything that? Um, yeah, I mean, he actually you know, runs up there and tries to snatch that away from her. Okay, so it's the same thing. So it'll be her strength is six. What's your dex? Uh, Eleven. Okay, so that's five points different. So she's minus two, so she has to roll under a four on a d20 to avoid you. Let's see. <laughs> she rolled a three. Ah! Yeah, you get sprayed. Make a dex check to avoid being sprayed by the ah! stuff that you want to grab it. <laughs> oh, no. uh, I'm trying to roll under my dex? Under dex, yeah. Okay, um, I just rolled 11, so that's a failure. Okay, yeah, so you get sprayed. So roll a d100. 100. I got one. 
One. <laughs> this has all happened before. Oh no, his head blows up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, so, Elise, what do you want to do? Uh, Elise is. Uh, let's see. Well, she, she cracked that guy last time really good, and it didn't knock him out. Uh, at the same time, she's not very agile. Um, okay. Are you thinking about it, or are you doing it? The game specifically says that you have to say right away on your turn what you have to do, or you're going to get scared. Oh, okay. Uh, she's going to use her cooking pot to knock the bottle across the room. I love that you're swinging a huge pot around. <laughs> yep. That's epic. Uh, go ahead. Make an attack. So we're on to your decks. Under my decks? Or strength, whichever one you want for this. Oh, good. Uh, 11 under 15. Okay. Yeah. Do some damage. D6. Uh... One. All right, you hit the, the, the bottle, but it doesn't go out of her hand. She, she, her hand goes flying back, um, but it, she doesn't lose it. Um, and uh, she, she does uh, uh, Constance or uh, Arturo want to do anything? Arturo has got the scaffold. He's just drawing up in the air like a painting, and he's going, the beautiful, wonderful planet of Mars. It is the most beautiful red I must take you ladies outside one night on a clear night and show you the beautiful skies. I wrap my arms around your shoulders, your bare, bare shoulders. How about Constance? <laughs> Constance is slowly clapping with a very confused look on her face. <laughs> okay, so next round of initiative, uh, Crystal, you roll. D6. I got a four. I got a four as well. I got a roll again. I'll get monetized. Uh, one. I got a four as well. <laughs> okay, go. Uh, uh, in order of initiative, so, uh, Ho, Ho. What do you want to do, Ho? <laughs> this has all happened before. What do you want to do? Yon. You're muted, muted. Yon. Nope, maybe you lost him. Okay, so at least go while we're waiting for Yon. Uh, Elise, is, she'll bring her pot back around and just try and crack this winch over the head. Nope. Oh. <laughs> uh, I rolled a two, so I'll hit for three damage. Yeah, uh, do a d6. Three. Three, okay. Okay, she goes down. She collapses, dead. Oh! I killed her? Yeah, I mean, hitting somebody over the head with a pot is not a, a non-lethal attack. I mean, that's pretty... <laughs> I mean, it's not oh, lethal. my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alicia drops the pot and, like, should I do a perversity check or something? Uh, uh, you If you've never killed anybody before, you certainly can. Uh, and I'm for sure, uh, sure I've never killed anyone before. Okay, well, hey, go ahead. Even though I've been picked on a lot and, you know, stuff like that for being a gypsy, mm -hmm. I'm sure I've still never killed anyone. Yep, Good lord, is sure. Constance pass out? Oh my god, nineteen. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have a delusion now. If you, if your mind slips away a bit. Do a D one hundred. Uh, nine eighty one. Eighty one. Uh, you need to feed parts of yourself to your friends in order to keep them safe. It's oh best. If, it's best if they don't know about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, on that, uh, everybody should make a perversity check. So everybody rolls. Uh, well, first of all, Constance has to roll to see if you pass out, and then make another check to see if you uh, have a. a I pass out. Okay. So uh, you still might make a delusion. So make another check to see if you have a delusion. Uh, Constance. That is, how do I check with, for delusion? Uh, same thing, just uh, uh, your charisma. Oh, under, under charisma? Under charisma, yeah. Yes. That's good. Oh, yes. You're good. See? I'm good with that. Oh, yeah, so you pass out, but you're, probably you pass out before a delusion can. Yes. Um, if, 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 I mean, it's up to you guys. I don't know if Ho's ever killed anybody or seen somebody killed before, but uh, or, or Toro. That's up to you guys, if your characters have seen that or not. No, I'd say, but I, may, I succeeded two out of 16. Okay. And Ho is gone. Mr. Ho, why are you not writing some good 
poetry. The Missy Lee's just killed a woman. <laughs> yeah, you, he, could, he, you could write the murder in the Rue Morgue. Mama, I just killed a lady. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he um cracked uh, my oh. pot against her head. Now she's bleeding and she's dead. Yeah, you just killed that old lady. Poor old lady. Um, yeah. I'm going so, to, uh, but, but, can I go get the spray bottle? I'm going to go pick up the spray bottle. Yeah, 100%. And there's I'm also, uh, with me. you can see that, so it basically has a um, roll of D6 to see how many uh, doses it had. Oh, one. My, okay, so one. Um, you got one more spray in there. There, there are actually twelve uh, bottles on the shelf that are labeled uh, with, you assume names of medicines. Uh, would I, um, even though I don't have a doctor's deal with having like having that the laudanum and stuff, would I have any kind of? Well, I had that friend who was a doctor. Would I have any be able to make any knowledge of maybe yeah. what some of them are? Yeah, definitely. You, uh, you look um, and. I guess roll a d12, and you can examine one of them, and I'll tell you what if you know what it is. But, uh, while he's doing that, uh, Elise would like to gather up some of these books. Uh, she's going to start uh, making a fire so that uh, she can uh, uh, get some water to boiling and begin making uh, food for everyone. Uh, there's not books in here, but there's this stuff. Uh, I thought you work. said there were books. No, no, it's shelves. The shelves have the drugs on them. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, there's stuff, though. Well, there must be books if she mixes drugs. There's actually probably, she actually mixes these in here, so there's probably something you can start a fire with. So, short. Sure. Uh, Miss Elise, we should probably uh, go somewhere else because once Constance comes back and sees this old lady's bashed in head from your heavy blow, she will pass out again. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I rolled a 10, Daniel. Okay, so you look at number 10. Um, it looks like it is. Uh, it's very syrupy. From it's marked as being uh, uh, like a medicine. I don't know. Obviously, the name's medical terms, but it's it's marked as being a medicine for somebody when they have a cold. Something that you would take for that. All right. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pick up Miss Constance, and I guess for us to go try to go to another room. Okay, sure. Yeah, the, the only except for going back, the other room that you could go to is one more door. Um, if you pop through that door, let me take a peek. That door is, let's see, a uh, half dozen old bunks lined the walls of this room. The door uh, make a dex check. A dex, okay. Yep, I'll pass. Okay, so you open the door and then, like, you step back really quickly as you sense. Uh, something uh, wrong and a bucket falls on the ground and smashes and it's full of uh, uh, urine, shit, razor blades and old syringes. Oh, uh, this could have fell on Miss Constance. <laughs> yeah, uh, um. uh, okay, and then you also see, yeah, you see a bunch of bunks in here um, and there's some tables and uh, it looks like somebody like somebody's like sleeping quarters. It's fairly big. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go okay, like Constance down in one of those bunks. Then. Okay, and there's one besides the door you came in. There's one other door, um, but sure, you can do that. Um, that that scalpel from earlier. Uh, yep. Elise grabbed it, and she's gonna just like put it away. You grabbed it out of my hand. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say. I thought you, oh, you okay, took it. you had it. Never mind. I mean, there's probably another one in there if you want to find a scalpel. This, yeah, this, this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, she would look for string or something like that. String, probably not. Maybe in the other room. When you go into the other room, you probably find stuff in here. This is like a quarters. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. If you look around, I can get a D12 for each of you. I can give you a random thing that you find. Five. Five. Uh, heavy oil cloth, foul weather poncho. Nice. Oh, poncho? Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll actually uh, add one to your armor class, but it will be a minus uh, on your dexterity when you're wearing it. Minus one. So if you want. Yeah, I'll just yeah. hold it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll kind of put it over Constance now, kind of like a blanket or whatever for now. Okay. That makes sense. What did you get, Crystal? Six. Six? Mm-hmm. A kitten. <gasps> <gasps> oh, my gosh. Hey. Hello. 
fella? You find a kitten. Yeah, don't put him in your soup. <laughs> can I? Can I? Do I? Can I like make a roll to see if I can uh, get this this uh, kitten to befriend me? I mean, it's a kitten. If you give it some food, it'll like you. I'm assuming you have something to give it to have a ferret. Yeah, keep boy. that dirty. But aren't you good with animals, anyways? Keep that dirty thing away from me. Uh, yeah, I have a plus plus two to animal husbandry. Yeah, or, I mean. Yeah, I mean it's a kid, I, and I would give you like another plus three because it's a kitten, so that's like plus five. I mean, there's almost no way unless you just okay. roll turtle. On your so, charisma. would I roll a d twenty? Yeah, what's your charisma? Uh, my charisma is an eight. Oh yeah, okay, so you probably should then. So you're gonna have to, but uh, we'll give you plus five. So you got to roll under a thirteen. Okay. I rolled a thirteen perfectly. Okay, so it does. It's it's leery of you. I mean, it's definitely, you can pick it up and stuff. It's not going to run away, but it's not friendly. Uh, you haven't uh, followed it yet. How right. big is this room? This is a pretty big room. It's, uh, okay. it's, 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 uh, it's bigger than the other room. It's maybe 60 by 20. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Okay. Yelled that it was like a barracks or something. Like, there was probably a lot of people who slept there. There's only six bunks that are kind of physically in shape, but there's, uh, it looks like there's room for a lot more. Yeah, Arturo is uh, seeing this kitten. He's not happy at all since his affliction is hated by animals. So he's going to uh, like go to that other door and like he's going to try to peek in another room. Oh. While at least is messing with that cat. Well, I'm surprised that that my ferret hasn't reacted to you yet. He probably has. Well, if my ferret doesn't like you, I don't like you. If coffee doesn't like you, I don't either. And now this kitten doesn't like you? No. Nope. That's some, <laughs> that's really some signs right there. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not a new text. I don't know. I put, I put Yang back in, but I don't know if he's actually here. Yang, if you ever come back, just speak up. Right now, we'll just see he's sitting on his ass in the room. Maybe you brought him out of that room into this one. By the way, did you take that uh, that cough syrup stuff or or no, Tony? Oh yeah, I would take it. Yeah, I'd take it with me because yeah, there was more stuff. I, I should give you a, an option to anybody who was awake, which would also be uh, at least if you want to take any of those bottles, you could as well. I don't know that you have any medicine skill, but if you want to take anything, um, I mean, I don't think she would have any kind of medical skill. I mean, she's a yeah, you just want to know what it is. I mean, but you can grab something if you want. Okay, um, sure. Specifically, she would look over. Let's see if anything says that it's anything for pain. Let's see if you would know. Um, yes. There's something here that says, uh, well, it says, uh, it says something about uh, uh, how would I say this? sores, you know, remove remove sores from skin. Mm, okay. It's not pain like that, but but uh, but like yeah. Huh. That's what she just says it like that. Sounds good. Oh, it's an ointment, by the way. If you want to take it, ointment. Um. Nah, she won't. She's not. It's fine. Who? Uh, perfect. Let's get now, so that makes her happy. All right, so uh, Constance, you probably wake up. You wake up in this strange room with a, uh, a, a like a oil cloth, like a blanket or a poncho over you. And uh, no one else is there. Uh, I think that well, that would have happened before with uh with Elise. So Elise is probably in the room because, uh, and. Uh, I'll let you know if, depending on what I tell the Tony's in the other room, he may or may not be there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, um, Arturo, yeah, he was probably going to that other room right now. Yeah, you went to the room. I mean, I mean I'm going to let Tony's in there before I assume that you went to the middle. Um, okay, so it's um, this is a very long room. It's about about 30 foot uh, wide. Like, as you come in, like this way to you, left, right, but it's like 150 feet long. It's a huge room. Um, uh, it's a long hall. It looks like at one point there was a lot of these like wooden in between rooms built into it, 
but all the walls have been knocked down. So it's just like a huge uh, empty room. Well, empty in a sense. But right now there's uh, tons of like broken wood on the ground. Um, there are, you see some doors uh, on the north wall, which would be your right. And you can hear some sound in there, which I'll let you know what it says in a second. Um, it's full of, oh. <laughs> oh, hold on. The hall. Oh, geez, okay. <laughs> so you notice that, but what you would have noticed first, which I first should have read the whole thing before I say anything, is well, there's about 20 people in here. Um, no, I don't. They are. Uh... <laughs> we what? missed the crowd. <laughs> They seem to be singing, uh, in rehearsing or putting on. You assume rehearsing because, uh, um, okay. So there's about 20 people in here and they're all kind of dressed in strange costumes. They have uh, ropes and such attached to their hands and they're in, and the tops of their heads, you know, like they have like, like this and they are, they are all, there's a huge pulley system in the ceiling, and there's a guy that's yanking the pulley and making them move around and do things while he uh, seems to be doing all the voices for some kind of a play. Oh. Yeah, if they don't notice me, um, I'm just going to close the door back and walk yeah, back into the room with Constance and Elise. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty, pretty much engaged in something. <laughs> I won't, I don't even tell them about it yet. I'm just. <laughs> Uh, Elise is now with Constance. Says Constance is waking up, and she's going, Constance, look at the new little friend I found. She said, oh, you have a little kitty. You know, I had this horrible dream that you just killed an old woman with a pot. I, I've been having this nightmare, and I just can't, I feel like I can't wake up. But can you believe it? You killing a woman with a pot? Yeah, that would be... Okay, horrible. What do you think that? that I should name this little fella? <laughs> ladies, ladies, um, before we worry about that, where's Mr. Ho? Did he just, what, did, did we leave him in the other room? Yeah, Ho, Ho like somehow passed out from probably the violence that he saw, um, uh, being that he's seen it all before. Uh, <laughs> he's sitting on his butt in the room with the, with the, with the dead old lady <laughs> as he kind of comes to. And you can ladies, hear them chatting. Ladies, uh, I will make sure and bring him in next. And just, just do not go anywhere. And I'll go bring Mr. Ho in. Okay. Yeah, you go in and bring Ho into this room. So, uh, uh, probably, it's a, it's, it was a dormitory. It's got some uh, some bunks in here. Uh, and anybody who wants to look around can see if they can if they want to try to find anything interesting because there's items in the room to be found. I already found the kitten, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's give uh, Constance a chance if she wants yeah. to look in. Yeah, Constance is going to look to see if there's actually any clothing around besides this oil cloth. Um. Okay. Yeah. Make a check. Uh, roll a d12, rather. D12. Yeah. Uh, that is a seven. A seven. You don't. You look. You look under a bed, hoping because you think you see like the edge of something sticking out, like a wooden piece, and you're like, "Oh, maybe that's a handle for like a, a chest or something." And yes. you reach out, and pull what you find, and it's a harpoon. <laughs> a harpoon. <laughs> you find a harpoon. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if you want to use it as a weapon, I suppose, but that seems. Like... <laughs> I kind of hold it out daintily in front of me. <laughs> What's your strength? Is at least, at least, do you have any need of this? <laughs> um, you know, we might need to go fishing later. I mean, I, it doesn't seem there's much food on this island, in this asylum. She says, uh, that is true, I, but I don't, I, I don't even know if I could uh, throw this properly. Well, the, the, just, just lean it, lean it over there for now, and, you know, we'll get it when we need it. Okay. If there was nothing in that other room, and you know, uh, uh, Arturo didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, well, then let's see. Let's allow Ho to. Uh, do you want to look around for anything in here? Young. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, he looks around. 
D12 for anything you might find that could be interesting. D12. Oh, there it is. I got seven. Seven. Okay, well, we already found the harpoon, so we can't find that roll yet. <laughs> find the harpoon leaning up against the bunk. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. It's trying to one. a woman is holding on to it. You find you find a uh, a, a storm lantern. It's full of uh, full of fuel. Huh. Storm storm what? A lantern, basically. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Like a, like a big lantern that's that, that you can use in the wind and everything. That's supposed to use in candles or whatever. Yeah. Oh, um, and it's any oil left in it? Yeah, it's full of fuel. It's got a kerosene in it or whatever. Um, on that too, you guys suddenly kind of like look around and you realize that like you know this place has been lit by like flickering light. And maybe you're taking a minute to kind of look at it now, and you you kind of it's very odd uh, because these like torches and stuff that are on the wall. They are flickering, but they don't seem to be giving off any smoke or smell. I and mean, maybe you start to notice that now. That it's very strange. And oddly comforting. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not dark in here. Yes, the fact that it's not dark is really good. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you found all the all the stuff. That, you can look around again if you want. Uh, well, well, she is continuing to look for no. clothing. So sorry, I uh, no, I I found my kitten. Okay. I'm getting uh, my new little kitten, trying to decide the name for it. Okay, you can look. Uh, you can look again, Constance. Give everybody a chance. Say what the kitten look like. It looks like. Um, a live kitten, random color, uh, named uh, Polonomy, but you don't know the cat's name clearly. So, okay. so you can be any color you want. I mean, okay. I'm a calico fan, but if you want it to be a black cat, you can be a black cat. Calico sounds good. Uh, twelve. Uh, twelve. Oh, you find. Oh, this is good. You find a map of a secret gold mine in Transylvania. What? And that'll be next year's mission. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yep. my my future spouse will appreciate this. You know? Do you sh do you share the map and to show it to all of us? Of course I do. Look at, this, look at this wonderful piece of art that I found. It appears to be a map to treasure someplace. Oh, I will make sure, dear Constance, that you are, are rescued from this awful island and escorted straight to your fame and your fortune. Um, yeah. Would you be a love and hang, hang on to this for me, Mr. Mendez? Oh, yeah, of course. I, I have am. absolutely nowhere to put this. I reach and just, just grab it out of your hands. Uh, Go ahead. I just had a thought, everyone. You know, we were on that ship, right? And now we're on this island full of, like, these kind of crazy people. And that ship, like, it sunk. And these torches, they give off light, but they don't give off smoke or smell. Are, are we dead? I walk up to Elise and just gently slap her in the face. I mean, just like a light slap. And I go, did you feel that, good uh, lady? Does that feel like you're dead? Well, to be fair, as far as I know, I've never been dead, so I don't know what being dead would feel like. If I was dead and if I was slapped that hard, I would wake right up. <laughs> well, and believe me, when the uh, gentleman dumped the hot stuff on me earlier and me and Mr. Ho, uh, that was very real. Oh, this is another entertainment. Oh, it's a gypsy story. A gypsy um, story. No, no, no. This this is not entertainment. Uh, this is your entertainment. And I'll open the door at that point and show them the other room with the play going on. Okay, yeah. So you guys see this, this, uh, this bizarre police system being controlled by this man who Seems to be doing like he'll turn one person towards somebody and then make them move. And and as he's doing it, he's doing one voice and then he turns another one and does another voice. They're all very similar voices, but you can tell he's trying to make different voices. Um, and at one point, he start, starts to harmonize with himself terribly as he sings the song. Oh, uh, Mr. I believe uh, this this is Mr. Ho's specialty. Mr. Ho, please go read him one of your great writings. <laughs> Um, 
Are, I push and I push Mr. Ho on out in front of us. Are those men alive? Well, hello there. Um, uh, what is that you're doing here? He asks so that the man turns and he says, uh, oh, 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 The play is not ready yet. My actors are still rehearsing. I have to look at this. Do not come here. You're, in, you're, you're interfering. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, but it goes live next week. Make sure you buy a ticket. They're only, uh, you know, uh, they're very expensive, really. No, you should buy a ticket. But not now. Not now. We'll do. We'll come back next time then. And uh, he goes right back out and closes the door and says, That man, um, I feel like I've seen all of that before. <laughs> And he's not even a very good puppeteer. Definitely not. <laughs> but we um, should, we should uh, probably go uh, get some tickets. At least they, the the people that he's moving around seem to be like grunting, and they're standing on their own, as far as you can tell. So they seem to be alive, but they're not. Uh, uh, they're they're either either really like, drugged out or something, because they're just kind of like like not moving, like no expression on the face, whatever. This island is most fascinating. I would write all about it in a poem that uh, I would publish next time if I had the chance. But what's going on here? Yeah, I don't know, but we must continue continue forward. There has to be a staff member here somewhere. So and you just have to clap. And she claps. <laughs> what is that man in the painting said? Oh, help. Help. Are you going to? You're going to open the door back up because he closed the door. You're going to open it back up into the puppet room. Uh, constant. Uh, only if I believe that there is house staff in there. Uh, well, I mean, you open it up and you you clap like that, and, and nobody. I mean, the guy turns around and he has, he has that same kind of weird. Uh, he's like, "What are you doing? What are you, young lady? Put some clothes on." Oh, oh. how disgusting! Go. Oh. And he points, he points actually to the to what would be your right and his left. And you just see another door there. I go through it in tears. Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> no, I'm utterly <laughs> in shame. Because I am naked running around. Yes, you are. Uh, is anybody following him? Oh, yeah. Arturo immediately runs behind her. Yeah, and so is Edgar. Arturo is entering his room, and you see. Uh, what appears to be some form of a chariot race uh, in this giant room, uh, but the charioteers are uh, in wheelchairs uh, and they're being pulled by uh, humans uh, as they're running around, crashing into each other, going around in a circle. And let's take a five minute break and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okie doke.
Okay, crystal's back. I'm back. Okay. So, oh, Mike's back. What about, uh, oh, hold on. Where is, oh, he left, left. Okay. We're still waiting on our, our fine poet. <laughs> we have our, uh... <clears throat> oh, hmm, interesting. There we go. So nobody's managed to die yet. Pretty good, guys. Who's that? Oh, except for uh, Frank will already dead, according to Elise. <laughs> Killed the poor lady. <laughs> wow. The pot. Oh, man. I already feel badly enough about that. <laughs> You were like, I want to whack her in the head with a <laughs> Actually, I remember that happened to... Remember I was Van's trying to, you know, I mean, you know, I was trying to just kind of knock her unconscious or something. I mean... Yeah, you don't know your own strength. You have a big cooking pot? Is that what you're using? Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> I mean, she was spraying us with stuff in a bottle and everyone was going mad. I'm sure no one can really blame me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think actually, it was I a dream him. anyway. So <laughs> I blame I blame him Ho because he knew uh, everything. It, uh, this has already happened before. He could have told you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's funny you're walking around this big cooking pot. That's what's funny <laughs> to me. Well, she's a gypsy, so she's got it like attached to her backpack or whatever. Hmm. I mean, you being a libertine, you don't care that kind of stuff. You just have a lot of cash on the. Cane. <laughs> How long do these uh, delusions last? I don't know. A lot, a few hours, anyways. They're supposed to be permanent, but well, the way the module's written is they're they're a lot less frequent than the way I'm doing it. But I think it's more fun to do it more frequently. Um, but then they're supposed to be permanent. But I'd I'd rather have more of them and have them be less permanent. But it, you've only been here for like an hour at the most, so. All right, waiting on Yang for a few minutes. We'll give him another minute, and then we'll just go. And if he shows when he shows up back, sometimes he gets delayed. You know how poets are. Yes. There he is. Speaking of the Ho, Mister Ho, welcome back. Yes, sir. Okay, so this room, I'm going to read the box text area because I feel like. And this is one of those rooms that you want. <laughs> so this is a huge room, first, I'll tell you that. So when you open up the door, you're looking into a giant room. It's got to be like 150 foot by 150 foot. You're more or less in the, uh, if I'm just using the, the top of the map being north, you're more or less in the southeast corner, though not quite in the corner. Um, when you look to your right, as soon as you come in the room, there's another door right there. So it's like you came through a door. If you were you go right back into another door if you wanted to. Um, there's also a door on the north side of the room, way over on the other side. And there's two doors on the east wall, uh, sorry, the west wall, which would be to your left. But, <laughs> but, 
A glass and iron roof uh, lets the well, would be light into the room, although it's pouring rain. You you really when you come into this room, you really hear it now because it started. You weren't hearing it in the other room because you're in a stone building, but now that you're in this room, this is a glass roof, a giant glass roof. You can just hear the the rain just pounding on it. Um, okay, uh, there's an open an open colonnade runs around the large square room. Uh, Incongruous. This is Lee. <laughs> That's always a tough word to say. Incongruously, uh, children's playground equipment, merry-go-round, seesaw, etc., is installed in the middle of the room. Uh, at any given moment, most of the inmates is, uh, are gathered here, uh, where one of the scenarios, which I'm about to tell you, is taking place. So you see, there's, this room is packed with people. Uh, a dozen uh, charioteers on wheelchairs, each pulled by six inmates, rush in circles around the hall, beating their teams and each other with uh, improvised whips. Uh, about uh, three dozen spectators cheer on their favorites. So yeah, you you basically you come into this room quickly because especially <laughs> Constance, uh, Constance because you're uh, you know you're you're upset. So you rush into this room and it's packed with people and you you know you you hear them cheering and yelling. You do notice too, uh, and maybe you you probably noticed it in the other room too that these people are, are kind of wearing like uniforms, you know, like they're inmates of, of, of the asylum, so they have like the same clothes on. Um, they're cheering and yelling, and as the rest of the people come in, you guys see this this event going on. There's there's a guy in the center. He's got a, a like a bed sheet wrapped around him, like a ro- like a like a robe, and then he has a crown on that looks like it's made out of forks, just stuck together. And he seems to be cheering in the center. And these these charities are rushing around the room in their wheelchairs. Uh, so what do you want to do? A collapse and a crying heap on the floor. Okay. <laughs> It's in so far as the other exits, the only one you can get to without having to pass through the crowd of spectators would be the one that's immediately to your right. But you can certainly could go through the crowds if you want. So you guys come in the room and you see Constance crying. They don't pay any attention to us, these people. Um, they don't seem to notice you at first, you know, because they're they're watching the uh, the show. Yeah, if there's a door to immediately out of there, it's right by where we come in. All this way, we must we must continue. Okay, so you want to just go right, not not go across the room where all the people are. You want to try to go to the closest door. Okay, Good. is everybody following? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, Elise is like sheltering her little kitten. Okay. Juro, Mr. Mendez, don't you want to stay here and witness this spectacle most rare? How many times do you see folks uh, race about in their wheelchairs like this? Ah, oh, but good, Mr. Ho. Um, what happens when uh, someone becomes upset and turns into a sore loser, you know, and we may have to defend ourselves? Surely madness be catching, but perhaps one of these fellows know a way to get out of here. Or at least steer us toward some food. Oh, follow me, good man. Follow me. <laughs> he shrugs okay. and just follows him. Okay, so you follow? Okay. Uh, Constance, do you follow? No. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Constance. You can't stay here. We got to stick together, don't you know? And she's crying and sobbing <laughs> about how there's just this huge extravaganza, and I'm sure everyone of any prominence is going to be here, and all she has is this shift in this oil cloth. <laughs> and if people see her, it's not only embarrassing that uh, she'll be a social <laughs> outcast. From all of this, and she's just trying to hide and uh, <clears throat> just pulling the oil cloth up over her, figuring that's the best bet at this point. Look on the bright side. Maybe if we continue on, you'll find some more suitable clothes. <laughs> she snaps up and she goes, Yes, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, how about. Uh, uh, at least, did you get yourself involved in this conversation, or did you just shoot up the stairs or whatever? What, what uh, no, no. I, I, at least, is following uh, Atura. I mean, he's in love with me, so he'll protect me. You know. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you guys bust open the door uh, there to the right. It's a stairway. It is packed with people. Um, these people seem to be very much like the puppet people you saw in the other room. They're just kind of standing there, like shifting back and forth. Um. 
So, yeah. It would be hard to go through them, huh? To get, you would have to, you, I mean, to do not touch them would be hard. You could probably push your way through them, but to, like, maneuver and not actually be physically touched by them if you're, uh, if you want to do that, that would be difficult. But you could probably, you know, push your way through. There's, it's not, like, so full. Turn, turn so. back to, back to Nero's Coliseum, to the races we go. And I turn back around. <laughs> Okay, you turn around and you spin around and right in your face to Lisa who is following you. <laughs> oh, 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 dear lady. Uh, that's oh, oh, very close. Uh, and at least you see uh, the. Uh, my kitten hisses at you, and I grab my kitten close and take a step back. Okay, so do you, you don't want to try to go through the people there on the stairs? You're, no, the stairs Artur are hey, Arturo, Arturo's not. He's not going to try to. Okay. Um, Edgar, he says. Hey there, fellas. Um, the director wants to see you in that room back there. It's your turn to perform. Yeah, yeah, people in the staircase. Okay. It's your turn to perform in there. Move along now. He just, you know, uh, says that. Yeah, try to move along. Okay. Um, that's good. I like that. You do a charisma check. So roll under your charisma. Oh, man. He failed. Failed by five. Okay. Um, if I use my grace, can uh, yeah, my grace of heaven, just my that is true, presence. Actually. Yeah, that that's actually true. I forgot about that. Sorry, good thing you brought that up. Oh, Everybody, you the uh, the innocent. What do you get? Plus one though, right? Only if they're they get a plus one. Only oh, that's right. They, no, they, uh, they get a plus one. If their perversity score is under twelve. Oh, that's right. And everybody's over twelve. Yeah, everybody's over twelve. <laughs> so it doesn't do anything for that. But grace <laughs> of heaven allows me to let's see. Or is that only for me? By using I get three grace points. Oh yeah. 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 And somebody can re-roll an ability check or a contest. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Go ahead, Ho. Let's you can re-roll. Ho. Yeah, like he says it again. Here. Don't you want to be in the play? Come on, guys. It's time to move. <laughs> no. I failed my six this time. <laughs> you are the worst poet ever. <laughs> <laughs> Even the grace of heaven can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, they're not moving. Unless somebody else wants to try this, <laughs> or you, or so basically, if you want to continue like somewhere else and not go back the way you came, um, you would need to either go through these people in the stairway or go through the people that are in the the chariot race. Like I'm either gonna try, way, I'm gonna try to sneak around a chariot race people because it would seem like maybe there's more room. Yeah, I mean, not really, but yes. I mean, there is in the sense that like, you're, at least you're in open space. So, yeah, you can do that. Um, try to... Let me see. And I'm not even going to speak to any of them or anything. I'm just going to you know, like, casually walk like I'm walking through them. Right, exactly. Let me see. I'm going to treat it as a stealth thing. Sneaking and subterfuge. Uh, wait, tend to the skies. Okay, nope. Check. I guess you're going to do, because you don't want to bump it in, then let's do dex. Oh, no. Fail by one. Okay. So you bump into them, and they, they start to, um, like, suddenly you're being kind of engulfed, and they're kind of pushing you into the center. They're like, new new rider, new rider, and they start to push you uh, into the, the center. There's, there's about four or five of them pushing you into the center already, and more are starting to cheer you on. Uh, yeah, I'll resist. Arturo ain't going. He's going to resist. Okay. All right, so they are, I mean, there's a bunch of them, so. I'm going to say they definitely got the higher score because of the, the because it's a group of them. So you're going to roll, and it's going to be against your strength, and let's say it's minus three. So take three off your strength and then try to get under that. Oh, no. Nope, that's a fail. Okay, so you get, so you get rushed into the center. They're pressing you into service. Uh, we, uh, the rest of you, uh, everybody can roll as well for your decks to see if you can kind of avoid the people trying to grab you all. Because they turn around, they see new people, they're trying to suck you all in. 
You can duck the home. Three number seven. I have the oil cloth over my head like a ghost because I don't want anyone to identify me. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever, whatever negatives you want to put on that. Yeah, so in other words, you're, you get grabbed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you roll, Crystal? Uh, I rolled a 16 and my dex is a 7. Okay, so you get sucked in as well. So you, you're not able to, to like sneak past them. What about uh, Poe? Edgar Alvin Poe. Fails by four. Hey, all right. You all get sucked into the thing. You read. <laughs> uh, the PCs uh, accidentally. Uh, press getting the disservice. Okay, so you can. Be... We'll say that you're one team. Um, so some, one of you has to be the dri the driver, and then I guess the three strongest of you should be the 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 the. Uh, the the mounts because you need to win this race to get out of here. <laughs> By the way, Ho looks pretty uh, scrawny. <laughs> Elise, uh, Elise looks deceptively strong for her size. <laughs> She's been slapped around an awful lot, and you know. I mean, Constance is just blindly walking around with a bag over her head. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, you, you certainly. <laughs> You, Whatever she has put at, she will do. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, um, I steer the boat toward the safety, didn't I? Maybe I can steer this race and uh, we could snatch victory. And win our freedom, maybe. <clears throat> Let's check. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll put the kitchen in a, in, a, in a sack by her side. Uh, she doesn't feel bad, badly about that, but she doesn't really have anywhere she can safely keep the kitten for now. Okay. Okay, so who's who's pulling the chariot? Which three of you? I guess I will. Huh? Okay. So let's have your strength. Uh, Tian. Okay. Who else? Uh, Elise. Strength. Fifteen. Nice. Oh, good lord. <laughs> and how about is Constance also pulling with her strength? Constance is too, but she has no idea where she's going. So, well, you the dex person has to deal with that part. So you're going to do yeah, so, yeah. So she's at ten. Ten. Oh well, wow, you're exactly equal to the ones I rolled for the your competition. Okay, so well, so that's that's a wash. So then it comes down to dex. It's going to be up to her. <laughs> okay, uh, their dex is fifteen. Okay, oh, dex. Edgar's eleven. Okay, so you're going to make the roll, and let's see, the difference is four. Come on, baby. Uh, so you need to get, hold on, i got to tell you, well, I don't know what to roll, but it doesn't matter. Can we I attempt need. to roll under our strength and see if we pull better? No. The, the strength was, if you had more strength, you were going to need a bonus. Uh -huh. Only one person rolls. Because otherwise, if you all want to roll for strength, then I have to worry about people tripping and stuff. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Right. Daniel likes simplicity. Uh, six abilities. I'm sorry, the PDF is set up different than the book, so I have to find. There we go, ability contest. Um, okay, so the difference was four. Oh man! So you need to roll at a minus two. So you got to roll under under nine to succeed. Under nine? Yep. Um, I my dex is eleven. I roll ten. So. Right now it's it was modified to nine right now. So you failed the first one. There's going to be four laps. So one, one, one for the for the uh, one loss. Let's see. How about the second round? Go again. Is it under nine? You got to be under nine, yeah, because they're 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 more dexy than you are. Oh boy, fourteen. Oof, two losses. Come on, no, man. No, Come you still got it, heaven. You, you want to switch up anyway? I'm blowing another grace point on him. Come on, Mister Mendez. <laughs> Do you want to me? Oh, oh, merciful God, give this man the ability to get us out of here. All right, you got to use a grace point on that one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mush, mush, mush. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, roll that one again. Oh, no. That's <laughs> 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 real 20. <laughs> All right, well, it's best three out of five, and you've lost two so far. You can win the next three. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Yeah, man. 
natural <laughs> twenty. You want to make any changes that somebody else want to drive? <laughs> um, oh, did you the next race? He comes up from the uh, wheelchair and says, "Well, I, I suppose it's time for me to mash." <laughs> Is anyone more dexy than? Uh... Yeah, I'll, um, I'm gonna go to him and then I'm gonna pull out my um, bottle of laudanum and give him okay. just a dose and say, uh, "Take, take this, Mister Ho. This will." Will help you help the good ladies. So let me try my hand at this. Sure thing. I'll give him, I'll give him just a dab of laudanum on his tongue, and then I'll take over the uh, dex deal. My dex is twelve. Okay, so you'll so it'll be minus one then for you. I think. Yeah. Minus one. So, so yeah, I need to get eleven that. under eleven. I mean. Under eleven for you, yeah. Um, what doesn't matter. But what's so uh, strength? Um, post strength is eight, but uh, he's gonna. Uh, hold on, you know, tight, and and um, he's gonna pull out the the little locket. Uh, it's his affection. Um, it, it, it's he calls it Lenore, a vial of his dead wife's fingernail clippings. Of course. Okay, so, so you're gonna be a plus three. Okay, so that's fine. So you're actually wanna. So actually, Tony, you you'll be a straight twelve then for this. That'll balance that out. So All right. Twelve. Hey, um, yep. Elise, uh, I just remembered. Uh, this uh, uh, Elise is gonna say uh, to is gonna say, um, "Oh, may that driver fall before we reach the finish line." Uh, and I would like to use my gypsy curse. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, you're cursing. Nice. You're gonna curse the the opponent. Okay. Yes. Gypsy uh, curse force kind of once per affair. Uh. Curse. Oh, okay. As the ability. All right. Let's look it up. I mean, realistically, that's fine. It can just work. I'm assuming. I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, I am curious since it's the first time really running this. I want to actually see how you would do it, but that seems like a good use of it. Where are the abilities? Ah, here we go. I'm assuming it's under a magician spell. Alphabetical, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm looking at the PDF. Curse, 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 curse. All right, guys, just quickly looking on. I also want to see some curse. Curse. User inflicts negative supernatural condition upon the recipient, curse typically power, the blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Reduce the ability point by four points, opposing a minus three penalty on the da, da, da minus two other effects. It, they do get a saving throw, but I'm going to say that they're not. The, I'm not going to give them a save because they're, uh, you know, they're basically uh, insane. Um, Does my okay. desk get any bonuses for using a whip? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, so actually, if you do, if you curse the driver, then he's only twelve. So you're, you're Equal, and I already, and I gave you the plus one for this. So actually, Tony, you're gonna get it. You gotta go thirteen or under to do it. All right, I rolled a ten the first time, so okay. that's so you got one. Win. Yep. Roll a two. Got another one. This is it. Last one. Oh, eleven. So yep. Yeah, got it. With all the with all the benefits of the curse and the. Uh, other stuff you, you get through, so you, it's it's a you you're it's it's tight. Your guys are not doing so well, but when you switch drivers in the second half, uh, things come together. You know, O is surprisingly as swift as a mount, <laughs> and uh, and a uh, Toro is is excellent driver. And you guys win, and they they come in and they like lift you up on their shoulders and march you around a few times, uh, you know, kind of in celebration. But after about like two minutes, they seem to have forgotten what was going on. They just put you down and they start another race. So. You can leave through any of the other doors that you want, but at this point, you can do it quickly, which would how be many, there's... Uh, how many doors were we out of here? So there's a door to the north, which is away on the other side of the room, basically from where you originally started. And there's two doors on the uh, the west wall. One's like a large set of double doors, and one's like a normal door. Uh, Arturo would probably want... He would want to go to the furthest door. 
I mean, that furthest? would be what you would suggest. Okay, the north turret is the furthest one away, if everybody agrees to that. Yep. Sure. Yep. yep. Okay, there's a dragon. Okay, this looks a lot, uh, this looks familiar shape wise to the one where the guy did, was doing the puppet show, but it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit smaller, but it's like long and skinny like that. Uh, long, narrow hall. Uh, again, it was broken up into smaller rooms that have now been smashed down. You can kind of see the remnants of that. Um, you see that there's, there are uh, three uh, men tied to chairs uh, at various distances, uh, and you see two uh, gentlemen with uh, with bows, and they seem to be having a contest to see who is the better archer. Um, the, the, the people at the chairs are at 20 foot, 40 foot, and 60 foot. Um, the one at 20 foot uh, has two arrows stuck in his stomach, and uh, the one at 40 foot has one stuck in his arm. The one at 60 foot has none. And as you open the door, these guys are getting ready to shoot again, and they turn towards you uh, inquisitively. Um, they say... They're, uh, they're all oh, dressed in the... Um, they're all dressed in the um, outfits, the same type of outfits. They are. They're dressed in the same thing. And then they turn and they say, uh, one of them says out loud, ah, fresh targets, as you open the door. Uh, and they're 20 foot away from me? Um, They are. Let's see what the door is. Uh, not even. You know, they're, pre they're pretty much, when you open the door, like the door, you, you open the door and you look like to your right and they're maybe 10 feet away. And the, the targets, though, are further down. Like, they're, you're at one end of the room, basically. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, Arturo, when they say that, he's just going to take off running and charge into him and just tackle one of them and knock them down. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Let's do initiative then if you're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Did six. Nice. Did I shoot one? You can do anything you like, but you go in order of dexterity. So Arturo is going to start running. Who has the what your, you have the highest? Uh, my dex is twelve. Mine is eleven. Um, mine's a seven. Thirteen. So Arturo, Constance, then no, it'd be a Constance would be higher than me. I'm oh, sorry, Constance, then Arturo, then uh, Ho, Edgar, and then uh, Elise. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, yeah, Constance, you see, you you see slash hear this as you guys are quickly getting into this room. Uh, you see that Toro's getting ready to run for them. What would you like to do? Uh, I run with him. <laughs> oh, <Holy man. laughs> I mean, do you want to attack one of these guys? Or are you just going to run forward? Yeah, I'm just going to run forward. I figure I got my oil cloth, and we're running now. I've been running the last twenty minutes, so <laughs> another <laughs> short burst. You're not sure exactly what's going on. You're just going to run towards. I, I'm side. just. Yes. Okay. okay nice. Uh, I'm okay. over. I'm overwhelmed with everything. I'm just. I want to get out of here so badly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right, Atari. Now your turn. You can attack one of them. Yeah, I'm just going to run and tackle them, and if I do enough damage, I, you know, I will try to knock them out. I'm not going to try to kill them. I would just try to knock them unconscious. Yeah, shoulder. Uh, let's see. Well, that's right on the money for Dex. Twelve out of twelve, so that's a fail. That's a fail, yeah. He, he, he slips. He just barely, kind of like he takes the blow. He probably hit him, but like kind of, he just kind of avoids it. Um, ho. Oh. Uh, he pulls out his pistol. I think <laughs> you know back then they only have one shot, right? Pistol's yeah, and I mean you can have it out. So, so in this round, that you'll just be able to pull it out. You won't be able to actually shoot it. Okay. But I think that I believe that takes an entire. Uh, action as it would be however you want to do it because you don't have it out so you're gonna to have to pull pistol um and how about uh elise uh elise will run forward and straight up punch one of them in the jaw okay so you're boxing uh yes i am and i have a plus one of my boxing yep so now you get a bonus so you raise your deck right. by one point oh, you my strength. My strength? Yeah. can you strength the next strength is better for me uh, and I rolled an 11, and with that plus one, I need to roll under a 16. Okay, yeah, that definitely hits. So, but you do 1d3, I believe, and it is actually lethal damage because you're a uh, juice. I don't know if you automatically do lethal or if you get to choose. I believe you choose. Um, you know what? At this point, I'm just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't care. Actually, no, you know what? You can't, when you're using your fist, you have to use dex because it says right here. You can only use strength if you're using a bludgeoning uh, tool. 
It's actually oh, really, it, but you can attack twice because you're boxing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then uh, try punching him in the in the gut. Um, twelve. I missed both times. Okay. Yeah. So you swing. You 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 know this guy as a. Uh, as, as nuts as these guys are, I mean, they were able to shoot arrows at people 40 feet away and get a pretty good hit, so they're probably a little faster on their feet. Um, they're just holding bows, so they don't really have a weapon they can since you're all close to them. Well, actually, yeah, you're all too close. They're not going to shoot somebody who's far away, so they're going to actually just swing at the two people that are attacking them. So the first guy swings at... Uh, at... Uh, Toro. Oh, he rolls a five. Uh, he punches you for a D2 oh. lethal. Uh, for one point of non-lethal damage. All right. And the other guy says uh, to the to Elise, he says, uh, oh, you want a box, maiden? Uh, and also rolls a five. Also hits you for uh, one point of non-lethal damage. They've now dropped their bows, of course. Um, and we're back to the top again. Constance? Sorry, I try to appeal to their better sensibilities and just ask them to stop attacking us. Oh. Well, all right, make, it, make a charisma check, but I'm going to get, I mean, hold on, let me check these guys, because they're a little bit. Let me just look, you, uh, you're going to get a minus, but I just want to see how much. Mm, let's say it's minus three. And make a charisma check. Has speed over? Yes, yeah, so subtract three from your charisma and then roll under your uh, under that. Under it. Oh, yes. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're not they're not interested in in, 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 in what you have to say. Oil cloth, messy haired wet woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> A Toro. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try to conk one of them with my walking stick now, but I'm up there close to them, so All right, go try ahead. to knock them out. Oh yeah, four, and it'll do three damage. Okay. Uh, you whack him. He's he's still up. Surprisingly. Um, oh, now you have your weapon out. If you want to shoot. Uh, he shouts real loud. He says, "Unhand my companions, lest thou losest thine head." And he has the pistol pointed at uh, one of them. Oh, okay. Make a, a charisma, but I'll give you a straight charisma because you got the. The bonus, uh, you know, basically eliminate the uh, the negative because you have gun. Oh man, <laughs> fifteen. No, it's a fail. No, they 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 snarl. Uh, maybe they don't even recognize what that is, uh, or they just feel that the bow is a superior weapon. Who knows? But they don't they don't stop. Uh, at least. Um. Uh, is there anything around I could grab to swing at them, like a? Like a, a clubbing weapon I could use? Uh, there's nothing on the ground except for their bows where they're standing. You'd have to move away from them, or you could use a cooking butt, but you'd have to pull it out. Um, okay. Um, no, I'll, just, I'll just swing it on with this, whatever. Uh, I rolled a three that time for two damage. Nice. Okay, two. So back to the in, the, uh, in the face, his nose starts bleeding. Do you want to do lethal damage or non lethal? Uh, I'm doing lethal. Okay. I mean, they nice. shot it up with bows, so. And they hit me. Uh, so. I mean, they didn't shoot at you with bows, but they definitely shot at those other people. Um, oh. Okay, cool. Uh, now it's their turn. So the guy that you uh, punched. I thought I got to swing twice. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, you do. You're boxing. Go. Um, and the second one misses. All right. Do you swing? He misses. He, he kind of does the, uh, the Bruce Lee thing where he. You know, does this and he looks, looks, he's like, hmm, tasty. And then he's going to swing at you. You roll a one. Wow. Hit you again. Uh, how about uh, One point of non lethal. Okay. And the other one swings at uh, a Torah. He's not talking much. He misses with the 13 on the die. So then we're back to the top again. Constance. Is he uh. Crazy? She's running to the person in the first chair. Are they still alive? Um, yes. Okay. She unties them and yells at them not to just sit there, but to do something. <laughs> okay. It'll take you a minute to untie them. So you're untying the person with two arrows in their gut. 
Yes. And yelling at them. That makes sense. I mean, that seems like a logical move. Let me see. Looks, yeah. The RNA is the Freddy's in the stomach. Yep. Okay. Just making sure I was right. Yeah. So he's got two garrisons and stuff. You start on time, he's like, uh, uh, you know, not talking much because he's, he's got shot. <laughs> uh, a turret. Yeah, before I hit the guy at the cane, I yell back, Mr. Ho, uh, put good use to that thing and show us your training. Shoot one of these hooligans. But then I hit the guy at the cane. Okay. And, yep, a nine. So that, uh, two points of damage. Okay. Uh, so he goes down. Yeah. Okay. He drops. Um, okay, just uh, so we can do that. You're untying that guy? Um, yes. Let's see. So make a dex to, to untie it. You know, as, soon as, you, as soon as you pass the fairy check, you'll be able to undo it. Yes. Oh, you yep. did? Okay, so you'll be able to do it next round. So when you get down there, uh, you'll, you'll, you start to untie him, and he'll be free next round with the arrows in his gut. Um, and we are on. Oh. Oh. One of the guys drops. Uh, <laughs> you hear the sound? <laughs> um. <laughs> He shoots. I, I roll 17. But <laughs> uh, as a failed officer, I have plus one to shooting, and um, he has asset, a good shot as an asset. I, I believe that gives him three. Yes, yeah, so you got plus four total. So what's your dex? Uh, my dex is 11. 11 plus four is 15, so you still miss. Actually, and you got one of your proficiencies too high to, to get the... Uh, let me just look at guns for a second. Where are the guns? Here's some more. Fights. Elise feels a stain in her back and falls over. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> nah. Maybe. That's why he was a, he was a failed officer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a little section on... Oh, here we go. Weapons. So you have uh, a pistol. A pistol is a handheld gun. Smooth bore pistol is actually going to swim it. Oh, it's also supposed to give you a, uh, 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 they're not very accurate, so you should have a minus for that anyways. Um, uh, smooth, uh, okay, no, there's no rule in here for a few minutes, so we'll just see. Whatever, you miss. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Uh, it, it does take uh, two rounds to reload it, though, so if you want to try to take a shot, you'll have to spend the next two rounds reloading. And that is very loud. Which probably you know attracts the, the the people that are in the room behind you a little bit to the sound, but all that being said, at least um, she's gonna swing at the guy in front of her. The boxing yeah. skill. Uh, oh, I rolled a six with two damage. Nice. All right, that's enough. So you whack him and you're doing a lethal damage, right? You smash his nose in and he falls dead. Uh, just as you're doing that, the guy in the chair gets untied, and he, he tries to get up, uh, and he, he, he falls forward onto his stomach, and the arrows come all the way up through his back, and see if you faint there, uh, Constance. No! <laughs> ah. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> you, don't, you don't see it happen. You're like, turn to like, do something else, and it happens, and you're like, where did that go? I, I'm already <laughs> moving towards the next one. <laughs> exactly. You're totally not paying attention. Um, yeah, I'm you notice I want to break. The, I'm gonna break the bows, like their bows. I want to take them and can I crack uh, them and break them? Well, Elise is not gonna let you do that with at least one of them. She wants to take one. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Arturo will break the one he's on the guy that he had. Yeah, if you try to grab, you grab one and break it, and you're, you're with the intent to break the second one as well. But at least snatches it up before you, you're able to do that. Uh, there's there's um, a D6, D6 arrows on the ground. You know, help us. A D6. Will you roll that or? Yeah, you can roll. Two. Okay, there's two arrows there. Um, they're kind of crude, uh, so it's actually going to be a minus. Along the way, so the bow gives you normal. Because the bow gives you a plus, then we'll just maybe a bow and arrow. A bow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So no, they're normally flat. So you're gonna have a minus one when you're using because these arrows aren't exactly they're like homemade. Okay. Um, but you know, just keep that in mind. And you have two arrows. So yeah, you hear murmurs. Uh, the ho, oh, you're kind of in that doorway. You shot your gun. You kind of turn around. You can see the uh, the people in the room. A lot of them turn towards you, and they seem uh, inquisitive. Um, 
as to what's going on. Violence hasn't hasn't quite sprung in their eyes yet, but they definitely are looking in your direction. So what you guys want to do? Whatever oh, quickly closes the door. Okay. Whatever door is over from, from this room? In this room, there is another door way down at the end, but on that same south wall, um, which you know because you were in the other room, doesn't go back into the room that you were in, but it goes in that same direction. Yeah, I'll look at Constance as she's untying, and you will never be a nurse, I'm afraid. Constance, uh, these gentlemen are beyond our help. Uh, they've lost their minds, and now they've lost their health, and it looks like Mr. Ho put a good shot into that one because I wouldn't know, but at least punched that guy out and killed him. So I think Mr. Ho probably shot and hit him. <laughs> we must continue forth. Continue forth. Yes. Yes. Like he said, let's go. So, yeah, there's the final person that's in the third chair is not shot at all, though. Um, if you want to free that person or not, that's up to you. Okay. I just say I'm sorry and keep her running. <laughs> Yeah, Arturo, would. he'd keep going. Okay, so you leave. I'm so sorry. I will apologize as I run by him. <laughs> and, and one of the arches is only knocked out, too, says you. <laughs> you know that guy's dead later. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so you run down to that other door. Uh, let's just take a look to see if that room Well, he doesn't have any, but he doesn't have a bow or any arrows left, so. That's true. Uh, it's locked. Bring the keys, my lady. Bring the keys. Uh, Elise will step up and, uh, sh like, she'll put the uh, bow, like, the string, like, around her chest, basically. Uh, the bow on her back. And uh, she'll start trying out the uh, different keys that she has. This is hardly time for a party game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, you... You, um... Uh, the twelfth key uh, opens the door, <laughs> um, and as as a, as you click the door open, uh, you know it's it's uh, you as I should say you put the twelfth key in, you, the door clicks open. Uh, Elise will mo mo motion to Arturo. It's unlocked. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, just oh, mm, that cat hair is getting to me, and I open the door. <laughs> cool. So you, you open the door and you, you're looking and it's like a small bedroom. Um, it is, or it was a small bedroom. It doesn't look like the bed's been used in a long time. It doesn't have any blankets or anything on it. And the, the mattress is all kind of rotted. Um, you see there's a, a shelf on the wall and you see immediately see that there's more of these kind of bottles of drugs uh, there. The room itself is only maybe like 15 foot square. Yeah, I'll, I'll go and inspect them, see if I recognize any of them. Uh, yeah. Does anybody else go in? Or... At least, at least well. Go ahead. Constance okay. will go in. There's got to be clothes around here someplace. Yeah. You know what? Uh, roll a d20 and uh, if you get under 10, we'll see if you find something. Because this was the... Uh... A one. A one? Yeah, you find... You do. Actually, you buy the bed. You're like, more of us are searching other stuff, I guess. You uh, pull out a, uh, like, a footlocker. And there are, uh, it looks like a uniform, a woman's uniform. Uh, this this um, this room was the cores of the the matron of the female inmates. So it's just like it's like a, it's not beautiful, you know, by any means, but it's like a dress and everything, you know. It's still a dress. Yeah, it's a full dress for sure. Yes. She will, very, uh, very are there stays in there too? Yeah. <laughs> everything. Excellent. Full form. Yeah. So as you guys oh, are coming, Mr. cinch me up. Oh no, no, no. Mr. I, I, Mr. Ho, will you say no, 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 Mr. Mr. Ho is busy. I, I will be glad to help you, dear lady. <laughs> well, Mr. Mendez, always such the gentleman. Uh, can I look and see if she finds anything, or see if she finds anything on the medicine? Yeah, for sure. So you guys are in there, and this is go. You know, after like a, just about twenty seconds of being in this room, you suddenly smell a uh, like a. A stinky sound, like rot, a smell like rotten eggs, and as you kind of uh, you try not to inhale it, but it's it's too late. Um, everybody is getting doped. <laughs> uh, so you've got uh, let's see, 
uh, this gives the feeling of connection between the user and the universe while granting plus two to any perception-based roles. It seems to slow down time and cause mal hallucinations and euphoria. Oh, everybody has to check against their constitution, though. Of course. Oh, pass the one. Nat one. Okay. Uh, we're rolling against our constitution, right? Yeah, come on, uh, under, uh, under your con. Oh, man. I failed by three. Okay. The user has a bad trip and is crippled by feelings of fear and intense unpleasantness. So minus two on any social base rules. And this is going to go on for about six hours. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. You guys are pretty much doped right now. Uh, you don't know anything about medicine, but you I definitely only have uh, several different types of medicines and stuff here. Um, is there something specifically you're looking for? Something for pain you said before, right? Same thing you're looking for? Or? Yeah, yeah, same thing. Uh, let's see. Do I got that social thing, or do all of us? No, it's only if you failed. No, no, if you failed, you get the minus two to the social, but everybody also gets the plus two to the perception because you're like super oh, aware. Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah, no, no, only if you failed. Uh, oh, you, I mean, everybody would know what this is. You find morphine. Morphine is pretty well known. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Elise is just going to slip that in her uh, pouch. All right. I mean, there's a bunch of it. There's 17 vials of morphine. Oh, wow. No, well, she'll slip one vial in her pouch for sure. Maybe two. Well, also, there's 17 doses, which is probably, I wouldn't imagine the uh, vial be. We'll say that there's uh, one, like, jar that has 17 doses of morphine you'll need to use a well you can do whatever you want you can drink it if you want but it's usually you inject it i guess yeah i mean I she'll uh she'll just slip that that uh bottle into uh, her pouch okay yeah she will start the uh, looking around see if she can find any uh, clean sterile needles is she trying to hide that from us so she's put it in her pouch? Uh, yes yeah, she is so I can i can i try that. to observe her I, I have sleight of hand Okay, so what you got to do is you got to do your, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll go wisdom for perception on Tony's end versus uh, dex on your end for a sleight of hand. So your dex. And I got a plus one. I got a plus one because I have sleight of hand as well. Yeah, sleight of hand is just a plus one or is that an asset? Uh, it's a special ability. Okay, so it's plus one. It says plus one. Yeah. Okay, so that give you 10. Uh, and uh, Tony, your wisdom, you're going to get plus two because you, the drug is given plus two on any perception based things. Oh, wow, I don't want my Who's wisdom right? 17. Okay, and you're at what 10, Crystal? So that means you're going to make the roll. Wait, uh, how am I at 10? Isn't your dex my your dex? is a seven? Oh, so you're at eight. Okay, yeah, so the difference is nine. Hmm, let me look to see that. So this is a Ability contest. There's nine points of difference, which is a minus four. So subtract four from your current dex. So five would be your dex, Crystal, and roll under five on a d20 or else he sees you. Okay. Uh, 16. <laughs> so no. You're so stoned that you think you're hiding it, but he's so stoned that he sees you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, and I don't even I say that explanation. I don't even say anything to her. I just have my arms crossed as I'm watching her put in her deal and just giving her that look like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and she's going to begin to look for some clean needles. Uh, yeah, well, I'll say there's needles in here because they must need it for this medicine. Okay. I don't know how clean they are, but there's needles. <laughs> I don't think they cared about clean or not in 1792. <laughs> there's needles. <laughs> Fair enough. Mr. Ho, what is the matter with you? You act like you're just all nervous and all of a sudden. We shouldn't have come in here. The place, it's too big. It's driving me crazy. Everything is trying to get us. We're going mad, I'm telling you. Well, mad, we need to get mad. we need to we need to get fresh air. We need to get out of this place and find our only office, Devil Island. Yeah, there's no other doors out of this space, um, but everybody can roll a wisdom check. And, of course, you get plus two to your wisdom because you got the... Pass. Okay. I have a 17 wisdom, and I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> and, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, well, you're, you're busy doing your thing. 
So uh, yeah, as you're over there uh, helping her, uh, you know, find the clothes or whatever or whatever, um, Atoro, you notice there's a bit of a breeze coming from uh, below, uh, below the bed. So kind of when she moved that trunk out, it was probably covering something, and now there's like some air coming up from that area. There may be uh, some type of a passage that is going underground. We could come out to the to the uh, fresh sea and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a rowboat there. And, and I'm going to start moving and digging and, and looking to see if there's like a trap door. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. So when you move the bed to the side, you see there's a trap door on the ground and it's easily open if you'd like. Yes, um, this yeah. must be the way out of here. There's a 30-foot shaft with a metal spiral stair. Mr. Ho, bring your lantern. We will have the use of your lantern, I'm sure. Uh, you hold a lantern. I don't think I can go on anymore. Well, stay here and run the chariot races, Nero. Uh, he looks at uh, uh, Elise. Uh, does he spot her uh, shooting up stuff, too? Um, Elise isn't shooting up anything right now. Oh, well, she's not shooting up. She's just looking for... Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, you can you can roll. Are you trying to hide that you're over the needles? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do the same content, what's your uh, wisdom? Uh, oh. uh, does he get the plus two? Yep. As well, uh, wisdom is sixteen. Okay, so sixteen versus eight, right? Mm -hmm. so it's still a minus four. So you got a you got well, no nine, right? Sixteen versus nine. So it's eight, eight, eight points of difference. No, there's seven points of difference. No, it's eight. Not. It's eight. I have a seven plus one. Oh, it's eight. Okay, so minus four. So you got to roll below, below four, four below, four, uh, below four. I'm sure. Fifteen. Oh, that's a fail. No, not you. Crystal has to roll. She's trying to do it. Nat twenty. Okay, no, you're super obvious. You're like you're like so stone that you're just like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it couldn't be so. It's so obvious. And then, and then I'm just like, I just take like a giant, like animated cartoon, like tiptoe away, like thinking I'm being super stealthy. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Edgar, Edgar Elvin Ho just basically watches her and just nods. Yeah, I, I feel the same way too. <laughs> Just that, sir. Lady, Lady Constance, please. This is the way out of here. Mister, Mister Ho is babbling like a baby. I don't know what is um, happening to him. How are my animals reacting, by the way, in this? No, uh, oh. in this um, gas. That's a good question. Um, I guess they can make a save. Hold on, we look up what the kitten would be. I also have a ferret. And a kind of ferret, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh man! All right, hold on. I got to look at the presenter's book for that. This is important. It's very important, no? Because <laughs> this will be really funny if you have paranoid, uh, stoned animals. <laughs> uh, presenter. It's funny. I had the presenter's guide open, and then I closed it because I'm like, oh, I don't really need this right now. Uh, this has all the bad guys in it, though. Creatures and adversaries, animals. Uh, cat domestic. Okay, so the cat is got a nine con. So, so you gotta roll that. Yeah. yeah, so they'll they'll get the plus two of the perception, but then they have to roll under nine or uh, the cat will be paranoid. Do I roll? Yeah, you roll. Why not? Okay. Fourteen. <laughs> 14. Okay, so the cat is paranoid. Hmm. I don't see ferret listed, so I'm going to go with badger. That seems close. Badger or weasels? Yeah, I don't see weasel either, do I? No weasel, no. So we'll say badger. Badger's a little bit bigger, but we'll say badger. Wow, 15. Yeah, yeah go for it. You got 15. That's fine. 10. All right, so the badger's not paranoid. Uh, ferret, I'm sorry, is not paranoid. But the cat is scared out of its mind. And, and, and he's in that sack and everything, and so he starts to struggle. Um, Elise is going to attempt to use her animal, uh, her animal handling, uh, see if she can calm the cat down. 
Like she'll open the bag a little bit and like maybe give it some dry food and try to be like. Oh, oh, I mean, it, it's it's got this drug in its system, so I'm going to give you a minus three. Okay. Then it's a charisma check. Okay, that's fair. Um. So add all your bonuses and then subtract. Them. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to pull up my chart yeah. here. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got a plus two for animal husbandry. And so that gives me a 10, but a minus three is a seven. So I got to roll under. Do you also have the asset good for good with animals? Uh, loved by animals. Yes, yeah, so that's a plus three because it's an asset. Oh, okay. So that takes away the minus. Basically, yeah. Uh, so then that's an eight plus two, uh, which is a 10. So. Uh, and I rolled a nat one. Nice. Yeah. You can see the cat's very afraid, but it's no it's not like violently afraid. It's more like just taking comfort in you afraid. Okay. And uh, if if he if he, if if the kitten calms down enough, at least we'll take it out of the sack and snuggle it to our chest and let and let the kitten, you know, rest there. Okay. And you guys are lighting up the the the, the lantern, sorry. Oh, dear Lord, the lady will smack an old lady in the head with a skillet and kill her, but she'll cuddle a cat like a baby. <laughs> Wait a minute, she killed somebody? Oh, no, 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 just just never mind. I'm uh, Oh, I'm kind of lightheaded. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so if you want to uh, light up the lamp, it's a very narrow uh, passage. You can go one at a time, so he's going first. Yeah, our tarot will go first, I guess, the lantern. Yeah, so you creep down with the lantern. Everybody's following you, I guess. Um, it's it, The stairs are made of metal, and they're they're not particularly rusted, surprisingly, because you, you probably notice as you're going down that they seem to be maintained. Uh, you know, they're painted, basically, uh, probably on a regular basis. Uh, and when you get to the bottom of this 30-foot uh, shaft with these stairs in it, you're, you're, at, uh, you're standing in a tunnel, um, and you can see that uh, it, it goes about... 60 or so feet. That leads to the spot. Let me just see what the other spot says. Well, I guess this isn't that relevant. I want to write this second, but I want to give you the full. Uh, okay, no. So it goes about 60 feet, and then it seems like it, there's like a, a like a gate made of wood or something. It's hard to see because the lantern just barely lighting it up. But what the lantern does show is a very, very large man huh. standing in the, the center of the space. He's got uh, in each hand, he has like hooks that fishermen would use, you know, when they grab big fish out of the water. So he's holding two hooks like this and he's, 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 he's bare chested. Uh, and it looks like he's been beaten and whipped uh, most of his life. He's got scars all across his chest. His eyes are very uh, vacant, we'll say, for lack of a better word. He grunts and starts moving towards you in a violent way. So let's shoot him, point. Mr. Ho, shoot him. You see, um, you know, due to his megalophobia, he starts screaming. Uh, he says, no, no, get away, get away from me. He turns and <laughs> runs the other way. Okay, so, I mean, we should have determined, so who was, were you, were you next down the stairs? Um, Edgar was actually last to go because he reluctantly joined uh, the group going down, so... Yeah, he would have okay. been. Yeah, so you so you can do that then. There's nobody between you and. Uh, I guess. Yeah. All right. So who was who was next then? Uh, not that uh, I know. I would. I was trying to take Constance's hand to see if she would go next behind me while they were finishing up. Yeah, that probably makes the most sense. Cause, and then, I mean, it's, unless anybody has a problem with that, and then Elise oh. was basically taking care of. No, I was gonna say Elise was probably third because she was handling her kitty. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, oh. handling your kitty takes time. So yeah, so Poe Ho, Ho runs because he's, he's last. So there's nobody stopping him from running. So Ho runs up the stairs. But let's roll initiative first, though. Uh, you can roll Tony. You're at the bottom. I'll say you're at the bottom, so that's easy. But two. All right, they get, he got a four. So he's gonna charge towards you because you're in the front. Um, he runs towards you with with his beastly uh, uh, body and, and kind of vacant eyes, and he actually uh, gets two attacks. So he's gonna swing once with his meat hook. Um, he's uh, got a thirteen. Twelve. Okay, he nails you the first time. This is this is uh, lethal damage with the hook for three points. 
And it's all lethal, three point lethal. Yeah, it's lethal. yeah three points lethal. He jams. I'm at um, I'm at four points lethal total. I took one earlier, so just four. If that makes any difference. Well, how many hit points have you got? I got seven left now. Okay, yeah. As long as you don't go to zero. And I know the non lethal you guys might have taken before is gone now because time's passed. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. Zero makes you unconscious. Negative ten kills you. What did you say about disappeared from past? I didn't catch it. Uh, if you if you took any non lethal, that's gone now because it's been more than ten minutes. Oh, oh. So we we can go back to. Uh, yeah, I'll be at. Well, let me figure this up, man. I would be back. My total was thirteen, but if we regain, I would be at twelve, and I just took three, right? Yeah, you regain any non lethal that you took. I don't know. If All you're right, so I will be down to nine and uh, nine total and four points of lethal total. Okay. All right, and he's going to swing at you against you in the front. Oh, this would be a bad thing in a different game, but he rolled a 20. Huh. So he misses by a mile. <laughs> he, he, swing, he he stabs the first look into you and then swings like maybe you you, you quickly, uh, you know, being pretty light on your feet, you quickly move out of the way realizing he's a lot more dangerous than you thought. Um, and now it is Constance's turn. Uh, Constance will try turning around and going back up the stairs. Um, okay. I mean, I think I'll, I'll say you're all at the bottom about time to time. I mean, I'm sure I'm assuming that uh, at least we'll let you get past her. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's if that's fine. You can. Uh, you can, you can if it's Elise's it. turn next, uh, if yeah. Constance is coming back and Elise sees that, Elise is actually going to pull back as well, uh, and she's going to start trying to get her kitten back into uh, the sack real quick. So she can have her hands free. Okay, so you're gonna go back up the stairs a bit, or are you just gonna stay? Um, uh, yeah, I'm backing up. I'm trying, you know, trying to get my hands free, and you know, yeah, like I'm not gonna completely run away because I don't at this point really want to leave Arturo Arturo behind. Uh, but she's at least gonna take a few steps back. She has that okay. thing. She's just she has to get her kitten away first. Yeah. yeah. Um, at, at least. Uh, 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 Mr. Mendez needs your pugilistic skills. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. See so you back up. Um, and then it's back to the top. Uh, oh, no. Did Toro not get to go? Did I skip you? Um, I did. Because we we're. I don't know why I skipped you. You're, you, should, you didn't attack the guy, did you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I'm sorry, I skipped um, you because it should have been Constance. Then I only asked at least because because I need to know if she was out of the way. So it's actually your turn. So. What I want, what I want to do, which I guess maybe this takes my whole turn. I guess from having to switch things, I would have the lantern and my cane, but I want to, I want to drop the cane or put it up and grab that scalpel. I'm gonna this guy. I'm not gonna fool with him. I'm gonna try to slice him open. Okay. Yeah. So sure. does that does that take my whole turn to get the scalpel out though? Or? Yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to pull the scalpel off. The yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm still yelling, "Bring the pistol, ho! Where are you?" We don't often hear Tony yell, "Bring the pistol, ho!" But <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be the quote of the night. All right, so <laughs> so you you take your turn uh, drawing another weapon. Ho, you're 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 running. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, after hearing uh, that. Uh, He's running away, but he, uh, you know, uh, hesitates a little bit. He pulls out his pistol and starts loading it. All right, you never reloaded it. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right, you reload the pistol. Uh, that's fine. You can do that in the turn you were, you were walking because you you the stairs the stairs aren't that bring <laughs> aren't that big. Um, and then now it's Elise's turn, so you do the thing where you said you back up or whatever. Okay, so the only person actually physically involved with this guy right now is a Toro, so I'll let you roll initiative for the group, Tony. Six. All right, you go first. So you drew your scalpel last round, so you can do what you like now. Yeah, I'm just going to – I want to slice this guy in his throat. I mean, he's – you know, I'm, I'm perverse. I mean, he's I'm, – I'm pissed off. I'm ready to get out of this place, and he's not going to stop me. So, yep, I'm going to try to slice his yeah, throat. So this will be deck. A... Oh, no, I'm going to fail by it, man. Okay. You swing at him. He, he steps back. Um, he's he's been in the fights before. I guess. Uh, that's it. Actually, it was Constance's turn first, but she's. Uh, I'm assuming you're going up the stairs, right? You're not I'm going up the stairs. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you get to the top. Uh, then it's uh, Ho's turn. Who's loading his pistol? Um, by the top, I'm assuming still. And then it's Elise. 
Uh, Elise is gonna pull that, pull her bow out and string it with an arrow. I'm gonna guess that takes the whole turn to do that. Yeah. Okay. You gotta crush your body. It's gonna take you a minute. All right, so you do that. All right, uh, and then it's his turn. He's gonna swing at uh, at Toro again. Nine is gonna hit you. Oof. Uh, four points of lethal damage. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, like I said, he's 13, right? And then 12 will hit you again. Uh oh, a Toro might be going down. Oh, only one point that time. All right. Might, you're, you're, you're low. I don't think that kills you, though, right? Now I'm down to 4 HP right now. Okay, yeah, you're getting sliced with this guy, and it's probably pissing you off a lot. <laughs> and next round. Uh, so again, since you're involved, let's have you roll. A four. Oof, he got a five. All right, he's swinging at you. Fifteen, he misses. Oof, this could be the end. Seven. Oh, no go damage. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Yeah, that'll take me to zero exactly, and I scream out, okay. "You slow ho! Bring the pistol!" <laughs> All right. So the way this works is because you're taking uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, lethal damage. You're being cut up. You'll continue to bleed out each round one point until somebody uh, ties up your wounds. Um, you die at negative 10. So you're right. not dead. Yeah. So next round, you'll take one point of damage if nobody uh, uh, does anything to you. I forget where that is, but it, I, I know that's the way it is. I'm not going to looking it up. That's basically it. Um, okay, so Constance, you hear uh, some, some admonishing to the hoe. Um, as you get to the top of the stairs. Uh, yes, Mr. Ho, you need to be downstairs with your pistol. <laughs> okay, Atoro, it's your turn, so you're going to... Actually, you already took it this round, so we'll see I won't take a point yet. Uh, then it's Ho's turn. I guess if you're still loading, this is another round of loading, it takes two rounds. Um, he was loading... It takes two rounds to load, right? Oh, actually, you're right. It's loaded now. Yeah, so he says, if I keep on running, then he's going to chase us. we got to kill him. He's going to go downstairs, and uh, he'll take an aim. It's interesting because um, his profession uh, as a poet and writer of macabre genre, he gets plus one to things that have to have something to do with his profession. So this is definitely macabre, I think. But uh, with that phobia that he has, that takes uh, negative one away from that. Right. So yeah, I, I guess it's uh, still a plus four bonus. There we go. All right, I got uh, seven. Oh, nice. Right, give me d six lethal damage. Was that two d six? One. Everything does one d six. Six. Okay. <laughs> Fearfully, O comes down the stairs, uh, aims his pistol, and fires it into the chest of the brute. He staggers back, drops both of his hooks, and falls to the ground dead. <laughs> At your feet is a bleeding Atoro who is, who is unconscious. Uh, At least we'll... We gotta patch him up quick. Otherwise, yeah, he's gonna bleed to Elise drops her uh, bow and arrow and uh, rushes over to uh, to all our, our hero. Um, and like, is he unconscious? Uh, yeah, at zero, you're unconscious. Okay. Uh, um, well, I'm negative one right now because I. You'll take it this round. Yeah, you're at negative one now. Okay. Uh, like, so you, oh, actually, I'm sorry. You have to make a constitution check or lose a hit point. So you're not at negative one yet. You need to roll under your con first. Oh, con, okay. Yep, that's a good pass. Okay, so you don't lose a, uh, a hit point. You're still at zero. Okay, at least we'll like, lay him back on the ground and yell up to Constance, like, Constance, look for some bandages. Bring them to us. Okay. I mean, if it's going to take you uh, another round, at least do that. So make another check. 20. That's a fail, that one. Okay, so you're at negative one. I mean, in the end, you can patch it up. It's not really a big deal. I mean, it's a, a, you know, it is, but it's not. Um, it actually takes like weeks to heal back actual damage, but you are able to wake uh, wake him up. We'll just put you back at one when you're up. We'll say. All right. 
Um, but it probably takes like 10 minutes that you're sitting in this like damp, unless you carry him back up to that room. You're in this damp tunnel. And as you're in here, you kind of hear, um, you notice probably in the silence as you're waiting, you know, the people that are involved um, through that wooden door at the end, you can actually hear uh, the ocean. Uh, Elise is going to grab her bow and arrow and uh, she'll uh, walk down to the, to the door and uh, open it. Oh, shit. Okay. She's just gonna. She's not gonna say. No, 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 no it's good. Um, nothing happens. Don't worry. <laughs> anyway, um, you open up the door. Uh, there, you're basically looking into uh, what is a small like boathouse. Um, it's open in the front, so you can actually see out to the to the. There's like a small beach, and you can see the water. There is actually a small boat in there. All right, uh, Elise, quickly tell the others. Small steam arms, the words, the words. There's a boat. There's a boat out in out ahead. <laughs> well, thanks to the good hoe, uh, he took care of the problem. It, it was a strong fellow, but I think we need to get on the boat and we can go out into the shipping channel and there, there'll be a ship will pick us up. Yep. Uh, hoe, help me get uh, our curio to the to the boat. You don't need to ask me twice. And by the way, it's Mr. Ho to you. Maybe you can do do this better than you can race chariots. Uh, don't try to speak now. Just relax, my friend. Yeah, he helps them um, uh, get on the boat. Yeah, you guys get, get the boat. It's a small... Um, it's actually a sailboat. It has, the, it has a sail on it and stuff. Uh... It's pretty basic. I'm going to say that if you were a soldier, you probably have a... I mean, you guys are not seafaring people, but you can probably get out into the water and hope that you're found if that's what you want to do. Um, without too much trouble. You know, if everybody gets in the boat, you can probably push it out there if you'd like. Uh, do they find any water? Yeah, there's a beach. What do you mean, like a water to launch out yeah. into or a water? No, I mean, yeah, water to yeah. Drink. If you walk out to the beach to look, you actually see that this is like a small inland, like a like a lagoon almost. Um, you know, you kind of, you're looking at first, you're like, yeah, at first maybe you think it's a lake, and you're like, oh. But then as you kind of look, you can see there's like a bit of an opening, and you can probably navigate through that to get um, to get out to the sea, you would imagine, because you can smell the salt air, so you're not too far from the sea. No, I was wondering uh, if we could find any fresh water. Once we're out, oh. out out in the open ocean, then we won't have anything to drink. So that's true. Yeah, there's no water here. Okay. There's no water supplies. But you could you could also you know pull the boat out and then you know sail across this lagoon to the to the to the woods that are over there. The water there. I mean, it's a lagoon, so there's there's we'll say there's streams that are running into it. So there's not fresh water where you are, but you can see a place to get it. That's a good thought. Roll initiative or sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to go, go across the lagoon and get the water with the boat, or what do you want to do? Yeah, do we still have that harpoon? Uh, nobody took the harpoon. Do you want to go back for it? You can. The back <laughs> with the archers and the uh, the chariot racers. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, very specifically, the harpoon was left. <laughs> of course, they have to put down the cat first, so. <laughs> Exactly. You took the much more useful item, the cat. <laughs> exactly. So you, you all get in the boat, and you're starting up, uh, you know, you, you start to paddle it across the lagoon to the uh, to the other side where you can see some streams coming in. I mean, you can also go up the stream maybe, but you, and this boat is pretty pretty big, so you're not thinking you're going to go up the stream. Um, so as you're kind of going across, you're kind of looking out, and you, you, you smell suddenly this, like, stink of rot. And you look out and you see a bunch of like dead fish start to float up to the top of the surface and then out of the water. Let me, let me see if I can read this. Is Cthulhu in power armor? Uh, uh, anyways, uh, the boat went across. Uh, alerts. The, oh no, the, it's Cthulhu. The, the three guardians who wear the flesh suits of dead mermaids. Somebody's going to have to roll a fainting check. Yeah, I think so. No, I'm solid. 
You're thinking, I, I saw the Little Mermaid or whatever. <laughs> they hey, I pulled a chariot. I pulled a chariot today. Hey, nothing trays at me now. <laughs> they're not that big, are they? They're the size of me. They're 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 dudes with mermaid skin, like like they're like their skin pulled over them like a suit. Okay. Yeah. So they're, no, they're guys. They they come up out of the water. You can see like the the back of the mermaid like hanging off of them. It's it's rotted flesh, but they're they're men, um, and they have thin like a uh, spears basically like harpoons, but not a big harpoon like you kill a shark with. And they come up out of the, out of the, out of the water and they try to like they're trying to mount the boat. Shoot them! Bow and arrow. arrow. Oh, initiative. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Who you haven't rolled initiative yet, Chris? So, so go for it. So that's a good one, I guess. Five. All right, you go first. Uh, okay, so first would be Constance. You see these mermaid dress things? What do you want to do? Just I'm to smack them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> With what? <laughs> How dare they ruin my escape? <laughs> you guys gonna slap them? I am. This okay, so Dex. Backhanded. Okay. Boom. Nice. Just a Dex check? Yeah, Dex check. I missed. Okay. You swing at this fall creature, it avoids your blow. Does, does, they, does Constant get to attack twice, though? Because of attacking with bare hands? No. Only, by, only you do. That's your special ability. Oh, okay. That's what makes Gypsy awesome. Uh, that's Constance. Uh, Toro, I mean, you have one hit point. You can do stuff if you want. Um... You said they're like human heads, though, and human mouths and all that? Yeah, they're definitely men. They're men who have skinned mermaids and put the skin on them like wetsuits. Yeah, he's going to take that jar of that uh, syrup that he found in the, the uh, sanitarium that he thinks is some kind of cold medicine, but he's not for sure. He's going to take yeah. it and just wants to smash it right down into one of them's mouth. Oh, nice. That's epic. All right, <laughs> make, uh, make, that'll be Dex. Yep, that's a pass. Nice. And, um, wow, seven, because it says I get a plus one damage, so it'd be seven, seven damage, whatever that does. So. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, yeah, well, it's not lethal, but that's actually enough to not knock him unconscious. <laughs> um, yeah, he falls back uh, into, under the water and will likely drown. I mean, well, I mean, you don't know if they can actually breathe underwater or not. You haven't seen. <laughs> right At this moment, they look like gross creatures, but they're, they're basically men. Um, so yeah, you, you smash one in the face with the, with the cold monster and it goes down. It's like a night cold sleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh, what do you want to do? Got two more of these bad boys. Um, he's going to tug on one of the masts, you know, so you know how the sailboat has a cross, cross beam. Um, he's going to try to, uh, uh, turn the, the keel. What is that thing called? The, the wheel thing. Um, so that it swings across and, and smacks him off the boat. Oh, you're going full pirate on him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, all right, that's cool. That's epic, so I'll say yes. Because they're not really on the boat yet, but you, we'll see if you can do that one. Yeah. That'll be Dex. Okay. And if you do it wrong, everybody else is going to have to make a deck check. Cause they're gonna... <laughs> oh, no. I going to say, get down, me mates. A vast. <laughs> and it is two under eleven. Oh, nice! All right, go. That's that's uh good. You do D six damage. <laughs> cool. Six. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Another one. He starts to climb up on the boat and he gets whacked with the mast in the, in the face. Um, Sweet. Holy cow, guys! You guys have become epic fighters now. <laughs> And finally, Elise, there's one left. Elise is going to shoot it with her uh, her bow and arrow. Okay. Do you want to tip him anyway? Go for it. I made a uh, bow and arrow first. <coughs> um, I rolled a three. I'm pretty sure that hits, right? I had like yeah. a minus one. Um, and three points of damage. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, or oh, arrow sinks it too. He does not die, though. Um, however, oh no, no, he's not, not going to run. It's, uh, it's actually their turn. Um, he's going to try to stab into somebody on the boat. I, I'm not sure exactly where he is because we didn't really establish that. Someone said that he's got a spear. He can probably attack anybody, so I'm just going to roll randomly. I'll roll a d4. One, two, three, four. Uh, person number one, which is Constance. <laughs> Finally, Constance gets up to, <laughs> to uh, you know, 
Actually, maybe this is the same one that you tried to smack. He moves out of the way, get, gets shot with an arrow, and then he comes at you with his spear. So he's got to roll under a 10 to get you with the spear. And you roll 13. He stabs towards you, and you're able to, to move out of the way with no problem. And let's go, since you're being attacked, Constance, let's have you roll initiative for the second round. He got a 2. You need to roll a d6. That's a 2. Okay, roll again. 5. 4. Okay, he's going to go. He's gonna try to stab you again. He missed once. He tries again. He rolls a 20. He definitely misses. <laughs> he's... <laughs> uh, and it's your turn, actually. I go to backhand him again. <laughs> Say, you don't treat a lady this way. That hits. Nice. Do 1d2 non-lethal. 1d2 non-lethal? Yep. That is two points. You whack him, and he falls unconscious and goes under the water and starts to drown. There's only two left. Uh, yeah, they're out. They're, you're, you're, you're clear. And you start to maneuver away towards the thing, and you see the, uh, the man with no pants on standing on the shore. Um, and he calls to you. He says, oh, you got the boat. I've been trapped here forever. Give me a lift. Shoot him, ho! <laughs> Shoot him! He's gonna start shooting people. <laughs> he says, it's bad, it's bad enough that his members shrunk to the level that it is. I would just rather leave him alone. Yeah, you can definitely help him. I was just, he, he's, he's not gonna bother you if you don't if you don't go to him. Um, and you're able to pick up water if that's what you'd like to do and get out into the sea. Um, someday, eventually, you are picked up by a uh, a steamer looking for any survivors of the uh, the trip, and perhaps some uh, story were written about this. So let's let's do the Tony thing, right? We'll <laughs> we'll do a lot of this. What it was, and uh, well, let's go in my order here. So I'll start with Constance. Tell us how it ends for you. Constance makes her way back to England. Uh, making sure that uh, she never goes to Ireland again and only travels uh, by horse now. But uh, she'll go back to Daddy and her comfortable life. Nice. How about Elise? Um, Elise, uh, uh, she uh, will spend time uh, uh, with her, her kitten. Uh, who she named Cinnamon, uh, and she will uh, will begin to train Cinnamon since he's a he's a young kitten. You know, uh, it'll be a little easier to train him to be uh, part of you know her her show now. Uh, and she has a new companion on her uh, on her travels. Nice. How about a Toro? Arturo um, goes and heals back up, um, gets his health, returns his health the best it can, and um, he kind of starts walking with a limp, though, so he keeps using his walking stick, and he uh, goes to see um, the great poet Ho and convinces him to give up writing poetry and to start writing pirate adventures, and then one day he sees that he's written this great book called Treasure Island, but then he also goes and he visits Constance after maybe a couple years. And as she opens the door, he reaches up and he grabs the crucifix around her neck and he just jerks it off. And he goes, I'm your God now. That's how the story ends for Arturo Mendez, the libertine from Spain. <laughs> nice. Edgar Allan Ho. Alvin Ho. <laughs> Edgar Alvin Ho. Um, goes down to the cabin of the ship and he starts writing and he starts writing a, a poem called titled Deja Vu and uh, after a little while he comes up to uh, the deck and he starts reading it he says <clears throat> twice upon a morning dreary aboard a steamship most weary I dreamt I steer the vessel toward an island with a gloomy castle Surely we are in dire straits, for I beheld the death of shipmates. Utter did I under melancholy, as forsaken we were from one most holy. 
Upon the shores of Isle of Madness, March did we under great duress, past the pump hag, ere a nude man with a shriveled bag, until we came before a great keep where unspeakable dark deeds were done. Nevermore shall I see sanity, evermore sail the seas. And uh, he uh, bows to uh, before his uh, companions and says, well, that's what I wrote. I hope it publishes and sells. That's the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that was that was fun, guys. So, um, you know, as you grow older and, and time goes on, you you hear stories about uh, people, you know, various people who have been shipwrecked, and and and, and there's legends formed about uh, Demon Island where where souls are taken and never uh, never can return. And you think, no, nah, that couldn't have been where we were because we got back. So uh, this was Mad Am I, which is a, is it? It is an adventure from uh, Sean McGally, Mc, McAnally. Um, <laughs> there was a monster, but you guys didn't get to it, which is good. Um, and uh, we played it in Gasly Affairs. Thanks, guys. That was super, super fun. Um, nice little horror game for the, uh, for the season. And uh, my player is up here. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Chris, oh, we got the Transylvania it. treasure map. <laughs> yes, that's the next that's the next adventure. <laughs> so, yeah, that's super fun. Thanks for playing, as always. Um, and on the broadcast.